one eight seven seven eight. I didn't on the board. What are they reviewing? Targeting. Be mindful of the scorers. <sighs> Facebook Live. Be a big call too. Put him in the fifteen red zone yards more. of a guy. Fifteen yards of a guy ejected. Yep. Yeah. And that, I think that's their safety. It looked to me like he did have his head up where it was forehead, and if by rule. The new rule, then that's not targeting. They say he has to hit with the crown of the helmet. And... Well, I don't know, I hear anything. Are we in Q? You know Q? <laughs> you know Q? Q damn right. Confirmed. 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 <laughs> Check. Can anybody hear us? I think we're on. Uh, All right. Targeting stands. Yeah, Christy just sent me a text. Y'all live already? There you uh, go. Oh, yes. Cuts on cuts on cuts on cuts. Shifty. I reckon. Um, somebody just say that they hear us. Can y'all hear us? Can you hear me now? Can you hear us? Can you hear me now? 178 yards on 20 carries. Post game meal, Average corn sticks, and donuts. Philly, sorry. They are yeah, flanking out Mitchell out wide. That's where they ran. Last time they did that, they ran Holton up the middle. Design quarterback run right here. Come on. Oh, uh, Just now go. Run. Now go. Oh, why does he slow up? Yeah, just go, just go, just go. He's that far. Just go. That far. We know uh, we're going to be behind. Third and one. There's a delay, so. No spoilies. Y'all are probably going to, y'all are going to see what happens before we do. We're at third and one on don't, the. Don't give it to Mitchell here. On the seven. That might be Marlin Gunn Eight. back there. It is. No, no, I told you. Damn. I told you don't give it to Mitchell. Where's Marlon Gunn down there? What do you do? Go for it. Holton says. That's go what for Holton it. wants to do. Why? I mean, that's what Holton wants to do. We already He's not got our short yardage guy. Come on, man. They're going. Man, Pirates stay on the field. <sighs> now it's a full yard, long yard. Because I don't know. Special teams has been crap. Right. Design run. Let Run it, Holton. Just run it. Run it. Jeez. Oh, he's got it. I don't know. I don't know if he's got it. And you give it to Mitchell again. If you didn't get it there. No, he's They're not giving short. him the spot. <sighs> they're not giving, no, them, they're not not giving him the spot. Close. Fourth down. They're not even bringing nope. out the chains. You give it to Mitchell twice to run in between the tackles. He's not 
between the tackles, short yardage situations. What are you doing? All right. Well, what a great start of this watch along. Yeah. Nice having Marlon Gunn sitting on the sidelines. Dare I say it? <laughs> what? How much time's left on the clock? Like three, like almost four minutes. Where's BYU on the field? At their own 20 yard line? 15? I mean, that sets up to be no, what, an 10. 85 10. yard game winning drive? <clears throat> You're saying it, not me. I, well, I mean. But that's what it looks I'm like. I'm just saying. It's, it sets up time wise. And they, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken, they got all three timeouts. Why do we not go for three? Horrible play calling. Why didn't they measure? That was a terrible play call. I cannot believe we just went back Should to back. Should have taken the points. Went back to back. Should have taken the points. Back to back runs up the middle with Keaton on third. And, and what, did I, what did I say? Don't give the ball to Keaton Mitchell. What do they do? Give the ball to Keaton Mitchell. Not just once, twice. but twice. But twice. Same formation. Offset eye. Keaton Mitchell, I'm sorry, even with a fullback in there, is not an he's not a power back. God knows it. So you get that's two that's two stops on fourth down. That's two stops on fourth down. You get them on fourth and two, you stuff them at the line of scrimmage. You drive down the field. You have Andrew Conrad come out there and attempt the longest field goal I believe that he's had all year. Yeah, I think so. He pushes it right. You stop them. They decide they have the guts to go for it on fourth and one on in their own territory. You stop them again. That is two fourth down stops, and you get nothing out of it. You get nothing. Nada. You get nothing. Defense has been a struggle all year. They get the stops that you need, and the offense doesn't produce. Which the offense has produced. They've answered all night. That right there. Was the awesome. offense has answered was all that, night. That was bad play calling right there. But the def you want the defense to step up? They did. They got two stops on fourth down, and then the offense gets no points off of both fourth down stops. Holy cow. Been dubbing it man, up. Man, don't oh, be jumping, yeah. man. That's right. Been dubbing Tegan. it up. Brian Jones tried to jump over a dude. Didn't go too well. Speaking of which, did you see Josh Allen a couple weeks ago jump hurt, hurdle the defender? Yes. Talk about an athlete, man. Good Lord. When I was watching that live and I was so impressed. We need one of those on, in Washington. One of those court. Oh, you're not kidding. Where do you get one of those? I guess Wyoming. <clears throat> get a stop. Going to the outside. Contain. Oh, he's gosh. short. Yeah, he still been stopped shorter than that one. Gosh, man. Bottom line, you get the stop that you want. Twice. Defense just got, they just got to make a stop. You get the stop. That's all. <sighs> you stop them in their own territory. Uh, dang, I think I just saw a spoiler. Uh, stop looking. I didn't mean to. I think something bad's about to happen, though. Come on, Clip. Oh, no. You lied. Liar. I didn't lie. You lied. I'll show you what I saw. Oh, no. Well, How far are they ahead? <laughs> oh, I know, right? Oh, no. Fourth and two. Oh, gosh. What's about to happen? I don't know. No way they go for it on fourth and I'm two. sorry. I, I know, not, but things can happen. There's no way they go for it on... Oh, no, you're talking about a muff punt. I mean, things can happen. Don't I didn't see... All I saw... I'll tell you what I saw. A tweet that said, turn out the lights. 
And it was okay, from well a very negative poster named Redbeard. Oh. So I assumed something bad happens, but maybe he's talking about something else. Oh, no. Oh, no. And he's pointing that uh, way. Oh, we had too many men. I, uh, we had too many men on the field. Maybe that was it. Are you serious? No way. There's no way. Who are they counting? They're counting They're BYU. counting BYU. All right, I think maybe Redbeard's on a delay. All right, all right. God I'm knows it. I was anymore. about to say something that you yeah, have. You're, I was you're about to say. Up the I'm not looking anymore. All right. Dang. I was about to say this, and it's happened already this time or in this game. What? Something we've prided ourselves on. I heard Jeff Charles say it earlier. Nice. Pirates are second in the country, only averaging 31 yards They're off of penalties. They're going to block the punt here. They're going to block the punt for a touchdown. TJ Lee. Virginia. What? Nothing. I'm just <laughs> looking at you go. <laughs> but, I'm just, I'm hoping. Something the Pirates have prided themselves on. Block they it. They have had some stupid penalties tonight, and I thought that was one of them. Block but it. Thank God we were wrong. Hopefully it's not on this damn it's return. It's not. It can be. Oh, get away. Get away. Get away. Get okay. away. Good stop, boys. Right. Stop, boys. Come on, baby. Give me some, Clipper. Clip. Clip. Look. That's what I saw. That's Turn out the lights at 11.04, and it, it freaked me out. I'm not going to look anymore. Okay, that's stop fine. looking. I understand. You too. I, I'm just, I'm not, I'm, look, I'm just, I'm seeing. I'm sorry. Phone's down. What's your favorite U2 song? My favorite U2 song? Um, what's the one where they were on the rooftop? Uh, where the streets have no name, yes, maybe? Yes, yes, that's With it. the big build-up? Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, that was like like a one-take. That They really did that. If something positive happens here, can we do another rendition of the fi uh, fifth quarter uh, beat? Ooh. Now yeah, they put it I know, right? Yeah, yeah now, now you do it. Now you do it. Just <laughs> Billy Weaver is pissed. <laughs> Billy Weaver is pissed. Where was he on the last drive? Billy Weaver is one and fourth down. Billy now, Weaver is hey, Memphis pissed. Now like, Donnie, Donnie's gonna give you a little gun now, buddy. Well, well, Billy, I'm gonna, we're gonna <laughs> give a little gun here. I hope you have your concealed carry permit. <laughs> what are Utah's laws? Come on, can we win? Right there, I say it. Right there, now. Oh, yeah. A perfect great oh, yeah. play. Oh, yeah. Great play. Oh, yeah. Now. Third and one. Here we go again. <laughs> Mitchell <laughs> up the middle. <laughs> Mitchell <laughs> up the middle. <laughs> Mitchell <laughs> up the middle. <laughs> Once again. They guns in. All right, they got gun in. Sun's in, guns in. <laughs> oh, they gave him the first down. Wow. <laughs> These wow. dudes are some spotting fools, I tell you. Man, that's huge. See, where was that before? Let's go, good. Formation. What a terrible spot. Yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> Ooh. All right, 120. Isaiah Foote slow to get up once again. He was hurt earlier yeah, in the game. He's, he's Scott he's Embry playing. is in shambles. Scott from Maryland is in shambles if Isaiah so Foote goes down again. So you take timeout? No, it's probably an injury timeout. Because it no, looked like first timeout. Oh wow. Cause it looked like football. All right. Up. What's going on in the chat? What's up, chat room? All right, let's take it to the chat. Let's take it to the chat room. All right. Uh, uh, I got a question. There's a minute 20 left in this football game. Where is our producer, Shirley Talk Rose? Talk him up, Shank. Talk him up, Shank. Sean wants to see another Miss Morgan Aylers. Morgan Aylers, local politics. Local politics. <laughs> He's throwing up the hooks. He's throwing up the uh, crossbones. Local oh, politics, local politics. Yeah. Evan needs a beer. Kendra wants to see a gun touchdown. David says, let's see how we can screw this up. All right, stop looking <laughs> at the comments. We're about to play again. Uh-oh. -uh. what did you see? I didn't do anything. All right. I think he might have been talking about the previous spot. It was horrible. ha <laughs> And he crosses the 40 to the 38-yard line. And Andrew Bays, what did you see there? <laughs> Ball is now spotted at the 38-yard line, where it is a first, first down. down. Pirates. Pirates. Oh. 
chomp, chomp, chomp. Oh, oh my god. That one got away from him. And he yeah. throws it wide yeah, left. That's... Andrew, what did you see? Jeff, he threw it incomplete. I agree, Andrew. Who who's who's talking about? Andrew Bre uh, Andrew Bays. No, 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 no. Who's he talking about? That's on the sideline, helmet oh. off, head down, out of the game. I have no idea. Chad, I think they're talking about um, Keaton. Chad sent me a text to tell me to stop looking at my phone. Okay. Isn't it ironic? Don't you think? Run it. He's gonna go know. deep. He don't have a man, oh. and he almost threw a pick. That should have been intercepted. Oh my god. He almost threw a pick. That's why he plays DB. Oh. Holton wants the flag. Just getting to some sort of field goal range, which is probably about 20 yards. I've heard you ask like seven times where Shirley is. I'm pretty sure she's taking a nap before her softball game. So if you'd like to go wake her up, you can. Let's see what happens here. Third and 10. 53 seconds to go. Pirates don't know what they want to yeah, do with five, five seconds left on the oh, play clock. Get a few here. Get a Ball few. is snapped. Get a first down, please. And You're not going to get the first down. Now you got one yard. He went through all his progressions. Two yards. So what do you do here? Try to pin him deep or go. You got to hit him. You got to punt, right? I don't want to give him to him at the 40, so all they got to get is, I don't know. I'm not a coach. What are we doing, chat? What do you think we should do? Y'all are the smart ones. If you look at the chat, they'll let you know what we're going to do. We well, can't kick the field goal. Have to punt it's here. Too. Terrible. No, they're going to go for it. We need Justin Tucker. I hate those under routes. They need to move the field goal on uh, my to the Yeah, end. see, Keaton's on the sideline. Oh, that ain't good. Bryce says, haven't thrown it deep all good night. Good thing we got a bye week next week. Haven't thrown a deep all night, and at this point in the game with that call. Oh, boy. And yeah, we've got a pirate down, and it is 59. Are y'all punting or going for it? Uh, Daniel says, got to play for OT. Punt it. I agree. Brad says, Punch. clock management. Are you kidding me? Are you, ki are you serious? Oh, CJ, yeah, who CJ. went down earlier. Daniel says Keaton is done for tonight. Is that why we're seeing gun now? Oh, yeah, did they mention that? Yeah. I'm sorry. I missed that's it. That's what He's, Billy was saying. I know. You're not paying attention. You should be paying attention to me and not that. Who just, like, doesn't listen to things? I, I know and more than what's going on in your computer. I'm kind of scared to uh, wake Shirley up. Hey, chat, will y'all talk to me? Because I don't like anybody here. <laughs> y'all are my Especially only friends. Shirley. Especially Charlie. It's because you're being in like exclusive by the way, hoodie. Be, like I don't want. I want to be alone. By the way, y'all. I'm the Unabomber. Y'all are twinning. Leave me alone, Dad. <laughs> Leave me alone. <laughs> I'm going to my room, Dad. All I wanted was the Pepsi. Just the Pepsi. Sean says another inconsistent game. David says go for it. See how big our balls are. <laughs> See how big our balls are. Look how big our balls are. We just. Didn't get it and gave up a field goal. Yes, she's good. she would want you to wake her up by jumping on her. Ooh. Taylor says, I'd go for it. Have faith in Put the D. Put Jaffer in. We had faith in the D against Put Memphis. Put Jaffer in. Let him try we? along when the field When we scored too early. Fourth and eight. Holy four. moly, they're going for it. Ah, I would probably punt. But then again... Maybe I got tiny little balls. Well, but, I mean, that shows a lot of confidence in the defense right here. Oh, uh, yeah. Because they've only got, well, they got two timeouts because they did have one taken off the board, but BYU's got two timeouts. Oh, my God. Charlie's pissed at me, but it's okay. <laughs> Quarterback draw. He's oh going deep. Oh, my God. No way. I mean, what are they? What? <sighs> There's flag. a flag. It's going to be on what, though? What a prayer. I don't know. It's on them. Ain't on Got to be on them. Ain't on my guy. Well, get off the damn field. <laughs> hey! Hey! Oh. Was that on 
on. Okay, so was he on that play there? Wow. A gift from the gods. Yeah, yeah he was right there. Eight. Yeah, oh yeah. Uh, good, good yeah. Ball. Good ball. I would say so. I would that say left so. Arm right there, yeah. I mean, that's he, like, you can't hold our guy like that. That's damn sexual wow. harassment. I mean, like, bro, he was all over me, bro. I mean, I like, he was all over me. The high school dance. Like, he was like tangling with me. <laughs> Give it to Gun three times, and if he doesn't get in, kick the field goal. No. From the forty? <laughs> oh no, we're not at the forty. Both got them bad with numbers. I all right. lost your minds. I get it. No, you got to go for a touchdown, no, you man. Go Screw a field goal. Yeah. Just keep clawing. Keep clawing. Get get to a chip shot. My balls have gotten bigger since that last play. Don't go, go for a field goal. Gun. Give it the gun. Yeah. But just protect the rock. No, Please. we're we're, getting, we're settling for a field goal, but that's kind of Houston's thing. That's Houston's thing, man. Well, and that kind of thing. But think about it. And that kind of deal. On, you're on the road. Technically, you're an underdog. You're tied up at 24. You've got control. Even if you miss the field goal, you force overtime. Yeah. If you run the clock down, last second field goal. So this is, so you say exactly what we did against the Navy, basically. And lose, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or have it blocked and turn the other way. <laughs> Wait, what? Wait, who are you? <laughs> what are you? <laughs> against Navy, we settled for the field goal and missed it, correct? Or did we miss in overtime? Missed How did it. that game we, go to overtime? We, no. Missed in overtime. Remind me. Chandler, you act like I'm a dumbass. Tell oh, me what Na happened. Oh, Navy this year. Yeah. Navy this year. What oh, happened? Navy, Navy this years year. Ago. Yes. Na I thought you meant Navy last what year. What happened at the end of regulation? <laughs> we I don't remember. I don't remember. We, no, we settled to go to overtime. By, and did we miss a field goal in, over, uh, in regulation? No, no. no. We just settled we just to go for didn't go for No. It. Right. We just settled to go for overtime. All right. I, hey, look, I'm sorry. I know, I'm sorry. You no, were I, looking at me no, like I'm I was sorry. the biggest no. moron you've ever seen no, in your I'm life. I'm sorry. I thought y'all were talking about Navy last Jeez. year. Yeah, because that's I was going to say, we ended that in regulation. <laughs> sorry, guys. Sorry. All right. They're throwing here. They're definitely throwing here. Definitely throwing here. No, we're not. Definitely not throwing here. They're setting up for three. Yeah, because they're putting it in the middle of the field. It's, they got two timeouts. No bad, no bad angles. No, no. Well, the one he missed was bad angle. He pushed it. <laughs> Same way Daffer had from the left and pushed it. So you want it on the... I want it right in the middle of the field. Well, yeah, but if it could be a hash, what hash do you want? All right, so they're... All right, uh, eight, Andrew. seven, six, five. Andrew Conrad. I would think and we might, you. we might get a call from Joe in Greensboro tonight because just a couple of weeks ago he called in on like a Monday or a Tuesday and said he actually called in on a Monday because Isaiah Winstead was in this studio, didn't know who Andrew Conrad was. Joe was going off about how a four-year starter. Somewhere in Charlotte, I believe, or Greensboro. All right, Conrad. And he has a chance here to do something that hey, Owen well, Daffer did last year. Freshman, and that's, yep, freshman did it last year. Good kick. He just pushed it. He just, yeah. Mm. All right, here we go. You got this, brother. No looks at the comments. To send the Pirates. Bowl to the Cure Bowl. Bowl. Hey, we could be talking about bowl possibilities he's, he's got this. on the fifth quarter. He's got this. You uh, think so? Uh, yes. Look at that weave. That's about right. Is that a bad angle? Center. That's straight away? That's he's good? Got it. He's got it. This is money. All right. Can we get a good Look, he not, he's not even bo He's not he even was, bothered by the ox timeout. Nice you know what? I agree with you. He's got it. He's got Does it. the snapper and the holder have it? hey -o! Now. Hey, we're about to find out in 30 seconds. In one minute. Did everybody that is an announcer use to kick? kick. Yes. <laughs> I used to be a kicker. Including Andrew Bays. Technically punter, but I'm sure he kicked well, at some point. All-American, baby. He put his foot on the ball. Get a good, get a good snap off. Yep, look, he's got, he's got bounce in his uh, step. He's got a little he's bounce in his step. It. He's got a little bounce he's in the toe. This. He's, he's got a little bounce it. in the toe. Nail it. It's not even going to be a question. Right down the Mike plank. Houston's like, man, I keep relying on these guys. Then again, he's bringing them in. Yeah. He's like, Jesus Christ, what am oh, I doing? Yeah. Mm. Right down the middle. Right baby. down Broadway. They're going to ice him again. 
It's all right. And Conrad's like, that's fine. He's going to go over there and kick in the net again. Do the routine. Skip, going to come bouncing back again. Skip Holtz is going to tell him a joke. Oh, wait. No, my bad. He's laughing. <laughs> yeah. Now, if we were in this situation last week at home when Skip was there, would Mike Houston let Skip on the field to tell and say, hey, can you tell Andrew Conrad a joke right quick? Yeah, yeah. Do y'all remember what the joke was? It was something about a quarterback, right? <laughs> yeah, he wanted his quarterback yeah, was the punchline. Yeah. And, man, did it get Ben Hartman tickled, and, man, did it get him fired up because he nails one against Carolina. Did he do it again in the – Hawaii Bowl? Oh, yeah, because I ran, I was doing um, sideline for the radio. All right, here we go. Yep. Do we hold on the fifth quarter? We're locking arms, March Madness style. Do we hold that, man? We hold on to the fifth quarter. Locking arms. Hey, right down the middle, baby. Right down the middle. One shining moment. Broadway. Good snap, good hold, good kick. Oh, my God. He got it! Brought to you by U.S. Cellular. Be sure to visit one of ECU graduate Brandon Tate's Platinum Cert. the store near you. We go beyond the call. So, how does show points work? Well, at Jersey Mike's, six regular number 13s plus three giant number 7s equals a free regular number 13. So, Pepsi and Lay's now earn more points towards free subs. That adds up. Exactly. Download the Jersey Mike's app and earn rewards towards free subs with every sub, Pepsi, and Lay's you purchase. So, how does show points work? Well, at Jersey Mike's, six regular number 13s plus three giant number 7s equals a free regular number 13. So, Pepsi and Lay's now earn more points towards free subs. That adds up. Exactly. Download the Jersey Mike's app and earn rewards towards free subs with every sub, Pepsi, and Lay's you purchase. Temperatures are in the low 30s at 10 a.m., increasing sharply to 75 degrees by 1 p.m., and then dropping into the teens by 10 p.m. So before you go to work, put on some gloves, pack some shorts, and a parka that should cover you for the day. Your heating and cooling take a beating. Guarantee your system is ready when you need it. Call Delcor. Buy a new train system and make no payments until 2023. It's hard to stop a train. With inflation and high gas prices, you don't need another payment. So buy this month and make no payments until 2023. Delcor, the service professionals. UBE and PirateWear.com is excited to offer Pirate Nation the largest selection of new ECU merchandise and tailgate supplies ever. UBE has the best prices in town, so that makes UBE your one-stop shop for all things ECU. UBE does daily restocks of Champion, Adidas, and Under Armour. Don't forget to bring your young pirates in to plunder the Crow's Nest, which is the only kids' store dedicated to ECU. Plenty of free parking uptown in Greenville. Visit them at PirateWear.com. Go Pirates! 
All anniversaries are special, but because it's Bostick Sug Furniture's 85th anniversary extravaganza, we packed a lot into our big extravaganza with not one, not two, but three ways to save. Extra 10% off, plus 1937 local delivery, plus six months special financing on all in-stock and custom orders. Change your mattress, change your life, and get 48 months special financing during the big 85th anniversary extravaganza on now at Bostick Sug Furniture. Great food, great atmosphere, and great service is Atavola Market Cafe. Atavola is simply a restaurant that focuses on that, being a great restaurant. There's something for everyone at Atavola. The menu offers a variety of great choices like pastas, pizzas, sandwiches, soups, salads, and seasonal rotating selections. Lunch or dinner, Atavola is always the right call. Call ahead and get Atavola to go. Or stop by the bar for a drink with friends. It's simple. Come and eat at Atavola Market Cafe, Red Banks Road next to Food Lion, and AtavolaMarket.com. Atavola, pirates supporting pirates. Are you ready for some football, Pirate Nation? Bud Light is America's favorite light beer and the official beer of the ECU Pirates. When planning your fun times this football season, be sure to pick up some Bud Light at your favorite retailer. Bud Light carefully brews their beer to be perfect for anywhere there's fun. Because when there's fun, Bud Light is there. Get ready to have fun this season, Pirate Nation, and always stay in the game and drink responsibly. Bud Light, the official beer of the ECU Pirates and proudly distributed by Carolina Eagle Distributing since 1989. This is Big John Williams, strength and conditioning coach for East Carolina football, and you're listening to Pirate Radio, the voice of the Pirate Nation. You're listening to the U.S. Cellular fifth quarter postgame call-in show. Here's Clip Brock. 317-1250, Three one seven twelve fifty, the number on the Pit Electric Live Line on the U.S. Sailor Fifth Quarter Call-In Show. Hello to our YouTube and Facebook audience. Man, I had the greatest open I've ever had in my life, an <laughs> open for a lifetime. Some of the the words that came out of my mouth. Chandler's I, over there singing Freebird. I don't even know where it came from. But First of all, thanks for calling me out on Facebook. You told me, you, look, you t- no, I'm serious. You told me to, to switch it over. I didn't know that Shirley already did it. Are you mad? And I did it. I'm Are mad. you upset? I'm upset. Well, next, next time, look at program and audition. I just I, I switched it over, and that's what I did. We, yeah, you did. Hey, look, we're and not missed the have greatest this open tonight. I've this ever is, done. This I'm, is is a sorry. Win. I'm okay, sorry. Okay, apology we're accepted. This. We're not having this. I'm stepping in as dad. We're not having this. I'm sorry. Apology accepted. Now you apologize to him I made too. Made a mistake Flip. for what? Because I said. Sorry. There you go. Good. Now we're done. Let's get happy. I was. I did what I he was told. He didn't accept my apology. <laughs> I, I accept your apology. All right. Three one seven twelve fifty on the Pit Electric Live Line. Pirates. It's like that ugly kick. How it was, so? It wasn't pretty, but it was effective. <laughs> <laughs> this is the ugly start of the show. <laughs> Man, did it get blocked? Woo, no, no, it, it did, did I not. Thought, I thought maybe did not a hand had gotten. Yeah. Did no. he kick it with his ankle? I, I, I don't know. I don't know. I, I just adrenaline, I guess. Kenny, Cameron, Rod, hang on. Any further away. and (laughs) Yeah. I think we've seen his max. That's his long. The funny thing is the previous one, Weave, you talked about. I mean, he boomed it. Yeah. Yeah. It was just Just wide right. Wide right, yeah. All right, 317-1250. We go to David and Garner on the Pit Electric Live line to kick off tonight's show. Hello, David. Good evening, gentlemen. How about them pirates? I mean, that was a great game. Uh, I'm just ecstatic that we are actually winning games because of our kicking game instead of losing games because of our kicking game. Uh, It didn't look pretty, but it got the job done. Uh, So, yeah, I mean, we're bowl eligible, um, which is just awesome, right? But the thing I want to point out is, what is this Big 12? Like, I mean, we keep on beating these teams that are headed for the Big 12, so... Is it even a Power Five conference at this point? Or, or better question is East Carolina a Power Five team? I think that's the better question. The Big Twelve is scraping for what they can give because their big schools are leaving them, so they're they're being taken pillage from, just like the American is, and they're taking what they believe to be uh, the best that's left. Uh, I think they left one on the table, gentlemen. Yeah. But, yeah, I mean, it was a great game, great win. I mean, switched it out at the end with, uh, you know, special teams play. And, yeah, go Pirates, man. 
uh, bowl eligible. So, yeah, super ecstatic about that. All right, David, thanks for the call. David and Garner tonight, East Carolina, taking down the Big 12 teams left and right. Up next, Cincinnati. After that, Houston. Can they go 4-0 and in the Big 12? Uh, we're off to a good start. We'll at least go 500. That's so, true. That's, that's true. All right, uh, Rod is up in Wilmington. Hey, Rod. Hey, guys. I'm so happy for these young men and their coaches. And, and the Pirate Nation, i tell you what, uh, uh, those guys uh, dug down deep tonight. They, they laid their guts on the line when it – when the defense had to had to have it down there, uh, uh, getting them off the field in those uh, fourth down situations, and uh, you know the offense sputtered a little bit, but you know uh, they put a lot of points up, they answered it, answered everything they put up, and uh, they just never quit. And uh, that's where they, when you got a good team, when the when the boys they, you know come with maximum effort and lay their guts on the line and. And uh, get it done. And, uh, I'm not, I couldn't be happier. Big game. Uh, it's going to uh, turn this season into something. That's, you know, we got chances to play some other good teams, and I think we're going. I think we're going to do well with uh, Cincinnati, Houston, uh, uh, going out the rest of the season. But uh, one other thing I wanted to say was uh, <laughs> uh, last week. Uh, I made the statement about you guys picking the UCF. I, I didn't. Uh, as soon as I said it, I felt bad about it because you guys are on my team, and uh, I look at you that way. I think y'all are y'all are a great team. You you do a lot for this this school. I, I've been been uh, watching you that long, but in just a short time I've seen you, uh, what's come across to me is how professional you are and how. Uh, tremendous you are for this fan base and uh, how excited these fans uh, get and you, you've given them an outlet and you, you just entertain as, as can be and uh, uh, I want to apologize to Chandler his name his name was on the tip of my brain I got a 68 year old brain that uh, you know uh, sometimes I come up short and uh, <laughs> I was about to see Cameron but uh, you know, I choke at the end but I, yeah, I want to say he, I think he's a, a fine young fellow. I understand he was a long snapper. I knew some some great long snappers back in my day, and I've got a fondness for long snappers. Long snappers are a very important part of uh, the uh, the kicking game. And uh, anyway, I'm I'm just uh, enjoy watching you every every week. All during the week, I watch you and, uh, every weekend. So. Well, Rod, uh, we appreciate it. I'm I'm proud to be a part of your team. And last week, I let the team down. I picked the wrong team. I, I made a mistake. Oh, 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 but this week, this week, I righted those wrongs. I learned from my mistake. I picked the Pirates, so uh, I, I did the right thing. What I'm saying though is, y'all went wrong. Y'all laid the stats out on the table. The only thing I I was doing was I was playing the, the you know I was trying to put myself in their shoes and how frustrated they must be at this point in the season and I thought I just believe in my heart they're gonna they're gonna put it all together and uh, I just it just turned out that way and uh, anyway thanks Rod together in this and you you keep those fans going you, you're helping to keep those those uh, folks in the stadium and that's help keeping these recruits coming in here and that's you know, you know when we can fill that stadium up and and create the excitement you all play a big part in that and uh I just appreciate it uh, like you wouldn't believe. Well, I right. appreciate you, Rod. Man. Always we, great to hear from you. One of our favorite callers, yep. for sure. No doubt. And it warms my heart that Rod acknowledged my name this week. And uh, he's a big uh, long snapper fan. Big respect for long snappers. Well, you know what? I mean, technically, you're not supposed to know the long snapper's name. That's when that you know they're true. doing a good job. Good point. Right? That's a good point. And Rod there did say go. something wrong there, at least when he's ref if he was referring to me, the word professional. As, uh, <laughs> I saw you roll your eyes when he said y'all are professional. <laughs> How about uh, Bill Dinacola on Facebook? Hey! Hey, Bill. Big he, Bill. He said professional. <laughs> uh, yeah, so there you go. All right, 317-1250. We go next to Cameron in Greenville. Hey, Cameron. Quit, Billy. Jen. What's up? How about them pirates, baby? How about them freaking pirates? What a win for this program. Um, 
I, I don't think people truly understand how hard it is to go into BYU and win at BYU. I mean, I, I would love to see their home field stats against uh, non-Power 5 competition over the past, um, for however you want to go back and see. I just would want to see that. But uh, I want to say I feel sorry for the Cougars tonight, man, because in losses like this, I sure love alcohol, and they're not going to be able to drink any tonight. <laughs> That's a great point. Good for him, but guess what? In the words of what's his face they called last week, we slap every damn cougar on that mountain tonight, boys. That Mike Houston rolling there. Forget how bad our defense played most of the game except for the fourth quarter. We won at BYU against another Big 12 team, boys. And guess what? We are 2-0 and in the Big 12. Yes, what sir. Sign us down for the Sugar Bowl, okay? We have a chance. I was sitting here thinking to myself that that kick went in. All the fifth quarter calling shows that we had during the Scotty Montgomery area where we were just making things up to talk about because it was just abysmal. What this program has done, what Mike Houston has done, what Holt Naylor's has done, I want to say firsthand an apology to Holt Naylor's. I have criticized him this year. Holton, I will buy you dinner anywhere in Greenville. I am, I am eating crow. I take back every bad thing about you. I'll be your marketing person for your T-shirt company. What you guys and the seniors for this program have done for not – just the program, but for the city of Greenville, North Carolina, and for this school, it will never, ever be forgotten. And I want people, I want everybody that still had their doubts prior to last week's UCF game to be fully on board the ship for what Mike Houston can do for this football program. I want everybody buying their tickets now for the Houston game in a few weeks. Because we need to give these seniors a send-off that they deserve. But guess what? There's another game coming before that, boys. And there's nothing I like better than beating up a cougar than beating up a damn bearcat. Let's take this bye week, let's prepare, and let's go into Cincinnati with the Purple Haze Pirates and beat the crap out of Luke Fickle and his fickle little face in Cincinnati. Roll damn Pirates. All right, Cameron Way to in go. Greenville has uh, backtracked uh, a little bit because, uh, from his call a few weeks ago where he was talking about uh, Holt Naylor's, the T-shirt salesman in the well, future. I tell you what, here are the numbers on Holt Naylor's. 15 of 22, uh, 197 yards. No passing touchdowns, but he did run for two touchdowns. Managed the game again very well for the Pirates. Didn't put up staggering numbers, uh, but was a, a game manager uh, for the second straight game, and it just led his team to victory. Ron asking how many yards for Keaton Mitchell on the UBE stat sheet. 176 yards. Jeez Louise, 176. Yeah. 21 attempts, one touchdown. Hopefully Keaton Mitchell's okay. Uh, he was out that whole last series. Uh, sitting on the sideline, no helmet on. Um, hopefully it's not anything concussion-related because uh, he did take that helmet-to-helmet uh, -helmet hit where the defender was tossed out of the game for targeting. So hopefully he's okay. Uh, uh, sorry, Kip, no, I was going to tell you that uh, we have uh, the voices final call of the kick. Oh, cool. If you want to oh, listen yeah. to that. All right, Jeff Charles on the call. Let's hear it. To win it right here. Larson is in the hole. Middle of the field. There's the snap ball down. The kick is up. And the kick is good <laughs> from 33 yards out. You can paint this one purple. What an incredible win by the ECU Pirates. They become bowl eligible. Conrad, the freshman, ice water in his veins, hits it from 33 yards out. East Carolina leaves Provo with a 27-24 win over the BYU Cougars. My goodness, what an effort. The way you know, you know what radio. You know what radio reminds me of sometimes. Stats on the stat sheet, like if a guy dribbles one in the infield and it's a hit, Basically. but then another guy drills one into the gap barrel on the the bat. You know, what I mean, just the perfect hit. They're all the same. And the weight we had for it almost made it sound like a fifty-eight yarder. Right. And it was right. like, did it go? Did, it, <laughs> did he actually get over? From 33 yards. I was ice water water in his ice veins. In his veins. <laughs> Andrew Conrad. Uh, and Jennifer says, Jeff Charles' voice never gets old. I swear, he still sounds like he always has. Yeah. Yes. Doesn't he? It's, yep. it's incredible. All right, Kenny is up next uh, in Blunt's Creek, 317-1250, Pit Electric Live Line, U.S. Sailor Fifth Quarter Call-In Show. Hello, Kenny. Hey, Cliff. Uh, Billy, uh, 
Whew, I don't know about you guys, but I was sure was nervous on that last uh, snap and hole for that kick. But, uh, Billy, you kind of said that was an ugly kick. I think it was beautiful. <laughs> yeah. right. Hey, look, you know what? For the first time, I was not nervous. I had 110% confidence that he was going to nail that kick. I really did. I just had a feeling. I didn't think it was going to be like that, but yeah, yeah. I heard you. I heard you say he had it earlier. It's money, it's money. And I was going, oh God. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure a lot of people are telling me to shut up. <laughs> well, then Chandler wants to block it and run it for a touchdown, and I'm like, oh my God, man, hush. But uh, no, I, I said, I, I, no, I, I said that. That'd Look, be the worst thing. Chandler's a little bit on edge. <laughs> Let's not mess with Chandler. I got him a little upset. It's all right. I could have swore I heard Chandler say. No, I, yeah, Chandler. Can't believe was, yeah. you would well, say that. You're wrong, that. Kenny. That I love you, Kenny, but you're wrong. Can't believe you would say that. Uh, hey, I've never been wrong before. <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> look, uh, great win. Uh, all these guys calling in the other week claiming uh, Mike Houston has no signature wins. or well, mark two of them down. Uh, road victory against another team that's going to the Big 12, as the previous caller said. We're going to go uh, have a week off, get everybody healthy. We're going to roll up there to Cincinnati and smack them Bearcats around and send another one with a loss to the Big 12. And uh, just happy for these guys. Yes, it was a very nervous game. But, hey, you go on the road and you pull it out and win. That's all that counts. It's a big W. And I'll just leave you with this. How about them friggin' pirates? All right. There it is. Kenny in Blunt's Creek, 317-1250. Uh, we are going to take a break. We have 337 more people watching than we do likes right now on YouTube. So if you could, if you could find it in your heart to hit that little thumb, give us a like, give us a sub, a subscribe. We'd appreciate it here. On a late Friday night, early Saturday morning, and we got some live World Series to watch, Weave. I know. Five to five, that. top of the night. Top of the night. So we'll uh, watch that one, update you on the Buccaneer Music Hall scoreboard, and get more of your calls. 317-1250. Evan, Chris, and Monica, you are up next when we return on the U.S. Sailor Fifth Quarter College Show. Back after this. It's bow time. Why are Bojangles Chicken Supremes called Supremes? Well, with golden crispy chicken tenderloins this juicy, tender, and full of bold flavor, what else would you call them? Superbs? Nah, that would be weird. Get your Chicken Supremes combo today with a scratch-made biscuit, your choice of fixin', legendary iced tea, and have you heard there's a new sauce in town? Try our new creamy buffalo sauce when you get a Chicken Supremes combo today. It's bow time. Do you need custom t-shirts, apparel, or promotional items for your business, organization, or event? Keep it local. Print it local with University Sportswear. UniversitySportswearENC.com is your one-stop shop for all promotional products for your business. With over 1 million items to shop from, UniversitySportswearENC.com offers high-quality products at prices to fit any budget. Visit UniversitySportswearENC.com for contact information and to get shopping. UniversitySportswearENC.com, the official sportswear provider of Pirate Radio. Do you have an old injury or some pain that's been holding you back all year? It's time for you to get better. With Kinetic Physical Therapy and Wellness, we can help you get your life back. Whether you need to get back to a sport, back in the gym, or just back to enjoying life, our team of specialists use a one-on-one, -on -one, hands-on approach in our state-of-the-art facility to get you back moving again. Don't settle for where you are. Don't stay in pain. Visit kptonline.com today to see how Kinetic Physical Therapy and Wellness can help you live well, move more, and hurt less. You've worked hard to make your business successful, and that's why it's really important to always have a bank that's in your corner when you need them. This is Chris Richards from First Bank, and our experienced team of local bankers includes Lee Watson, Ashley Capps, Bonner Latham, Josh Hooten, and Heath Nisbet. To get the business services that are right for your business, come and see one of our experienced team members at First Bank on Arlington Boulevard in Greenville. First Bank, together with our customers, we're creating a world where individuals and communities thrive. Member FDIC. 
Hi, this is Jeff Charles for my friends at Ed Watkins Marine. I've known Ed personally for years, covering his winning performances on the football field and on NASCAR's pit road. Now Ed is winning on the water, and you get to win too. You win with awesome prices on boats from Ed Watkins Marine. And of course, great service after the sale. If you're looking for a new boat, contact Ed Watkins Marine today. They will deliver anywhere. Find them online at edwatkinsmarine.com and tell them The Voice sent you. Come and explore great shopping in downtown Washington at Naughty Life. Hi, this is Gina from Naughty Life, and new fall merchandise is arriving every day, featuring all the new Yeti products, like the loadout buckets and waterproof dry duffel bags. We have new fall clothes for men, women, and children. At Naughty Life, we have something perfect for any occasion, like new jewelry and a great selection of sunglasses from Costa Reflect and RCI. Visit Naughty Life on Main Street in historic downtown Washington, and like us on Instagram and Facebook. Hey, I'm Holden Aylers. No one knows better than me how important it is as a quarterback to have protection on the field to be successful. My frontline team is critical to my success. For your frontline insurance protection, you need the team at Buck Insurance Agency. Buck Insurance Agency is your local team and have been helping customers like you for over 30 years with their insurance needs. When you need insurance protection, you'll get the whole team with Brian Buck and his staff. Call toll-free at 877-357-1966. Go Pirates. Are my eyes playing tricks on me? Or is that a jack-o'-lantern made out of pizza? That's something I want to carve up. Sink your claws into the jack-o'-lantern pizza from Papa John's. Better ingredients, better pizza, Papa John's. Hey, Pirate fans, Papa John's is the MVP move for game day or any day. Place your order online at papajohns.com and sign up for Papa Rewards. Papa John's, better ingredients, better pizza. Go Pirates! Pirate Radio. ECU. Pirates. Can't nobody do what What we do. do. You know. That's That's right. right. All right, then. Yeah! The voice of the Pirate Nation. You're listening to the U.S. Cellular 5th Quarter Postgame Call-In Show. Here's Clip Brock. All right, 317-1250. Chandler, I just got a text from Touchdown Tony Collins that says, I'm a ham man. If you missed it, Tony Collins guaranteed a Pirate victory. If the Pirates did not win tonight, he was going to get a tattoo of a ham on one of his ham cheeks. Are you serious? But if the Pirates won tonight, which they did, then we have to buy him a Thanksgiving ham. So we will be we buying do. I will be glad. Not you, Billy. <laughs> Cheapskate. <laughs> I have to pay for this? I didn't this? know anything about it. <laughs> Me and Chandler are going to throw in like three bucks each. Troy will cover the rest. And there we're going to go. buy him a uh, Thanksgiving ham. So looking forward to uh, Tony Collins' appearance coming up on Thursday. All right. Um Okay, Papa B says La Tech and FIU are in overtime. If anybody cares, you want to watch that or yeah. this week? Was it football? Uh, yeah, yeah. Let's All right, watch some football. Conference USA football, baby. Brian, Evan, Chris, hang on. We go to Monica in Greenville next. Hello, Monica. Hey, Cliff. I feel like we've been hanging out since four o'clock, chatting about pirate football. It's been a long day for us. One of them days. That's right. Uh, yeah. Get Nadeau back on the line because he was wrong tonight <laughs> on our Pirates. <laughs> yes, he was, yes. Yeah, I'm going to tweet him about this. Um, look, for everybody who said this game doesn't matter, it's BYU, it's not conference, I disagree. This game mattered a lot. Pirates flew across two time zones. Uh, they played in the cold against 55,000 people. We were coming off a big win against UCF. We could not go down to mediocre play tonight. So shame on you for saying this game didn't matter. Uh, We got banged up in this game a lot. We had no choice but to come out with a moral victory and a win, and our Pirates pulled it out. This game mattered a lot, and we are now 2-0 against teams going to the Big 12. So tell me this game didn't matter. It mattered a lot, Clip. So I'm going to pop. <laughs> she said, "Time Clip. out." Yeah, no, no. That's, Time out. That I never uttered the phrase. This game didn't matter. 
I said if you win it, it is like icing on the cake. You if you lose it, it's not it, the end of the world. So you and Memphis was a must win. Matter. Last week was important. This one wasn't as huge to get as those. That's what I said. I didn't say it didn't matter. You inferred it. I knew this was going to be a physical game. We were going to get banged up. And the least we can do is come out with a win, and we did it. So we get a week off. Um, so let me just call out some really great things about tonight that were that were really clear. Um, this game, if you watched it, it went play for play. Score for score, score for score all night long. And then it went defensive stop, defensive stop all night long. It was going to be last team with the ball wins, and that's exactly what happened. It was also Keaton Mitchell against their running back, and Mitchell pulled it out. 21 carries for 176 yards was, was just absolutely incredible tonight. Um, the, the big thing that turned this around was if you looked at the um, penalty stats, um, BYU only had one penalty for five yards up until the end of the fourth quarter. They wound up with five penalties for 50 yards, and that was – during critical times at the end of the fourth quarter. They got big, nasty penalties that played in our favor and ultimately cost them the game tonight. So, um, you know, hats off to our defense for stopping when it mattered. And, and just thank God for our, our offense for pulling it out at the end. Big win for the Pirates tonight. We have all the momentum um, heading into Cincinnati. Um, I'm loving our Pirates right now. Um, so go Pirates. Every win matters. Every win is important, Clip. So that's your lesson for tonight. Thank you that's for your lesson for, for teaching tonight. me a lesson, Monica. Right. Also, uh, Jeff Nadeau just texted me. He said <laughs> he said he's uh, tuned into the fifth quarter. <laughs> and as I read that, he says Monica serving you up. So Nadeau is tuned in, Monica. So. <laughs> Y'all take care. Today. She's teaching lessons to everyone right. tonight. Mostly Dishing me. Dishing them out. Mostly me. Never said the game didn't matter. Stop twisting my words. Nobody. Uh, I'm not twisting your words. I said you inferred it. All right. Inferred. <laughs> Let's go to Chris. I don't even know if that's the right word. In <laughs> Pamlico County. Hello, Chris. How y'all doing tonight? Doing good. Man, that was an awesome win by the Pirates. Uh, that's, I meant. You go on Facebook and social media, and, of course, you got those halftime fans talking about, hey, we should be, you know, outscoring them by a whole lot. I mean, this is going to be like the Navy game and this and that. BYU is not a pushover team by no means. They might have lost, what is it, three or four straight now? I might be, you know, I think maybe five straight. Um, but they're no pushover team, and – uh that field goal at the end was awesome. I had 100% confidence he was going to kick that in. Like, uh, my buddy that went to ECU, and I, I went there, but I didn't graduate there. But we were talking back and forth. I was like, man, I was like, we're pirates, man. Don't don't, uh, don't give up on him yet. He's going to make it. And, uh, you know, that's awesome. You know, beating two teams going to the Big 12, and, you know, we're bowl eligible again. Uh I would say, you know, give Mike Houston a lot of credit for this. He's turned this program around, and I think we should, you know, look at paying him more or finding some more funds because I think other teams are going to be knocking at the door for him. But anyway, get great win, everyone, and uh, go Pirates. All right. Appreciate the call tonight, Chris. Hey, and, and you know what? Kudos to Mike Houston for showing confidence not only in his defense in the situation where they're going for it late, uh, and he had the, the confidence that is that if they didn't get it, that his defense was going to hold, and then the confidence, confidence in his freshman kicker to go out there. He played for the field goal, set up the ball in the middle of the field for his kicker. So, you know, I tell you what, that, those things, those two calls right there are going to go a long way in the locker room with those players to show confidence. It really is. Yeah, 317-1250. We go next to Evan in Greenville on the Pit Electric Live Line. Thanks for tuning in late night on the U.S. Sailor Fifth Quarter Call-In Show. Hello, Evan. What's up, Clint? How about those freaking pirates, man? I'm pumped up. Getting married. And the day of tomorrow. Dude, Lewis and Clark could not even find Keaton Mitchell in the backfield tonight. We are just we are pumped up over here in Manti Teo. How about this freaking Pirates? Um, so many gutsy calls to go through a fade route on fourth down in 8,000. Colin Ehlers throws a fade route 
I mean, that's an impossible throw. You got to give you got to give Mike Houston all the props for for calling that game because he stuck his neck out on, on the line. Also, I have to say, administration they're running the concessions good out in Provo. Um, everything everything looked good. Great atmosphere. Great intensity viewed by Provo, uh, Utah. I can't wait for BYU to to come to come to Greenville because that's going to be an epic matchup of two power base franchise and how about the big 12 serving up two big l's shout out steven igloo with the podcast thoughts clip good call are my thoughts evan i'm fired up just like you are you don't seem fired up i'm fired up you seem you seem nose into your phone you're not fired up it's funny because i'm tweeting out uh i just took still shots of us celebrating the kick nice. when i really was fired up <laughs> because uh charlie had said i can't wait to watch the replay of y'all watching the real play and so i was like well i'll get yeah, some still shots of that for a preview that's I good just, stuff i just posted the video so oh I, nice I, I replied to charlie and i have a uh, a video out of us re- uh reacting to the <laughs> andrew conrad game winning field goal but i Good. No, no, no. I, I just just wanted to say um, that you know what had BY, BYU went into this game on a three game losing streak. They've lost four in a row now. They come were coming off a road loss to Liberty where they just got pounded. Um, had they come into this game nonchalant, kind of looking like they were rolling over, fans not showing up, and East Carolina won this game, I wouldn't have thought much of it. This BYU team came into play. They were ready to play. Um, this is the team that we thought BYU was going to be early in the season. They yeah, came in and played a great good. game. They they really looked good yeah. because I didn't know what kind of team we were going to see from BYU. Is it like I think you said it in the uh, the pregame? Is this the, is this going to be a you know a, what a wounded dog or whatever coming into this game or is this is this going to yeah, be the BYU right. by BYU team that we thought they would be in the beginning of the season? They played great. They played a good game, and East Carolina deserved that victory, and it's a big win for East Carolina. And, man, have we played some classics there. Uh, 42-35 uh, seven years ago. Yeah. And then this one, uh, Pirates were able to get them uh, pretty big at home. But, man, uh, what a win tonight for the Pirates. All right, we go next to Brian in Raleigh. Hello, Brian. Hey, guys. Thanks for taking my call. appreciate that. Uh, fun fun. Fun outcome tonight, but certainly a roller coaster of, of emotions. I think through uh, through the the second half for sure. You know, I think uh, you know, I think hearing people giving credit for Coach Houston going for it on fourth down. I don't know if they had much of a choice because obviously we don't have a lot of confidence in our kicking game. So, um, you know, throw. I I almost had a heart attack when Holton threw the the long pass on second down when we were like driving for the game winning field goal incomplete pass now we got third and long so we, we got bailed out by the by the flag like it was just up and down the you know the whole second half of you know it was what are we doing to oh my gosh we might win um you know just just at a moment but really proud of, of the fellas it was a tough game they played really hard they put it all out there they beat a good football team tonight they are a good football team and uh you know definitely proud to be uh proud to be a pirate tonight so good to have a week to uh, you know lick their wounds a little bit and get healthy you know coming into a, another tough opponent um but uh uh you know very 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 emotionally swinging game and i think you know give uh I, you know, I know a lot of people i'm not saying that the all the game all the calls in the game were great today but you know give give donnie patrick some some credit you know a lot of people beat on him as well you know they kept beating the ball to keaton he was hot he was hurting them you know they they stuck with that. Uh, you know they and uh, uh, you know I think you know some good and some bad, but it, you know it's not all Coach Houston as well. Let's give you know let's give them all some credit. So you know the defense definitely stood tall uh, and and did their part to give these guys a chance to win. And great to see the young kid uh, make a kick at the end. So uh, everybody enjoy it. You know everybody enjoy it. Appreciate it, fellas. Go Pirates, and uh, have a good evening. All right. Thank you, Brian, for hanging out with us late tonight. Yeah, the only play-calling problems I had is, and I, and I said that on our live broadcast, that when they were inside the red zone, third and one or one and a half so, and they give it to Keaton Mitchell, I was screaming, don't give it to Keaton Mitchell. I mean, because that's just not his game. Why Marlon Gunn was not in that situation. Then they give it to Keaton Mitchell on fourth down again, and he gets stopped. Uh, that was questionable. So I, I understand what – 
he was talking about as far as it was a roller coaster ride of emotions. I mean, because you thought, man, we're setting up to lose this game. And then defense comes up with a big stop. Uh, East Carolina gets the ball back, and you're thinking, okay, we've got a chance to win this thing. So great game overall, though, but it was an emotion, emotional roller coaster at the end. And uh, Bryce and I were texting on one series about where East Carolina settled for a short field goal, and they went run, run, pass. And uh, we didn't really like that sequence, especially the uh, the second down run there near the goal line, second and yeah. goal. So like there was, and I think that was Keaton there. Mitchell as well, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, it was. And just you didn't get anything on first, then you yeah. go back to it, don't get yeah. nothing, and now you're mm-hmm. forced to throw. And you know, so I mean, but hey, here and there you're going to have play calls you disagree with uh, throughout a football game but man uh, what a win tonight for the pirates we got pays we got jackson we got tyler and charlie coming up next when we return on the u.s sailor fifth quarter calling show it is saturday happy saturday to you and yours it is midnight and uh a great day once we are finished with this go to bed wake up for some parker's barbecue while you enjoy college football or whatever you plan to do on saturday parker's has three locations in Greenville for you to enjoy. You can go to parkersbbq.com and they can ship nationwide. Thanks to Parkers for the pre and post game meal. All right, let's take a break. Come back. More to go. U.S. Sailor Fifth Quarter Collin Show. Back after this. This is Holt Nailers. I've been eating at Parkers Barbecue since I was a kid. Now, all these years later, I still love to eat at Parker's. In fact, I love it so much, I bring my entire offensive line with me. They protect me, and I look out for them with great food from Parker's Barbecue. So whether you bring the team like me or just your friends and family, the awesome barbecue, chicken, and seafood at Parker's is a win every time. Parker's Barbecue, where they always treat you like family. Before you hit the road this travel season, be sure to get your tires inspected by the Tire Guys at Greenville Auto World. The Greenville Auto World service team sells all the top brands and economy tires if you need a new set. Need an oil change, state inspection, or AC repair? Greenville Auto World can work on any type of vehicle, and the monthly oil change special is only $29.99. Make an appointment now by calling 364-8730. For award-winning service, trust Greenville Auto World. With over 30 locations across North Carolina and southeastern Virginia, Quality Equipment is your local John Deere dealer where you'll find everything you need for your next project. Our complete lineup of John Deere lawn and garden, agricultural and commercial worksite equipment comes with years of experience, expertise, and dedication. We know what it takes to get it done right. Stop by today or visit us online at qualityequip.com. When it comes to hauling dirt, asphalt, or stone, you can trust the pros at First and Goal Hauling Incorporated. They have a fleet of dump trucks ready to get the job done. And best of all, it's owned and operated by ECU football alum Dakota Marshall. When you have a big job and you need it done right, count on First and Goal Hauling, where it's a touchdown every time. Keep up with Dakota Marshall and First and Goal Hauling by following them on Facebook today. Are you suffering from anxiety, sleep issues, or chronic pain? Have you heard of CBD? You can learn about the benefits of CBD right here in Greenville at the Hemp Garden. Hemp Garden offers a variety of products and solutions that are truly making a difference in our community. Hemp Garden also provides products that can assist with energy and focus. Have a pet? Come check out their selection of CBD pet products. Visit Hemp Garden to speak with a CBD specialist in a relaxed and welcoming environment today. Exclusive discounts are offered to first-time customers. Hemp Garden, located at 3040 South Evans Street in the Target Shop shopping center in greenville portable super quiet and fuel efficient honda eu series generators are ideal for camping tailgating home backup power and more all feature honda's co minder carbon monoxide detection system for added peace of mind select models include bluetooth connectivity for a wireless control with honda's my generator smartphone app go with a honda eu series generator it's power you can trust see ron ears motorsports highway 11 north of the airport in greenville Greenville Utilities Electric customers will soon be able to receive text notifications in the event of power outages. 
Enrollment is automatic, so make sure GUC has your cell phone number by signing into your account at GUC.com, then update the information in your user profile. Want to talk with someone instead? Call 252-752-7166 during business hours. 252-752-7166. Update us so we can update you. Visit GUC.com for more information. Hello, Pirate Nation. This is Jamie Cuccinella, inviting you and your family to come by Cuccinella's Pizzeria in Italian Ice. Cuccinella's has been serving our special family recipe, New York-style pizza, since 1932. We think you'll taste the difference in just one bite. When you come in for a pie, don't forget to try our house-made Italian ice or gelato. We make small batches every day from scratch with all fresh ingredients. Cuccinella's on Old Tar Road in Winterville and a new location coming soon to Uptown Green. This is Miles Barry, and you're listening to Pirate Radio, the voice of the Pirate Nation. You're listening to the U.S. Cellular Fifth Quarter Postgame Call In Show. Here's Clip Brock. Now, with the Pirate Radio scoreboard, here's Shirley Rhodes. All right, let's run down the uh, finals from area high school football. Uh, Parrot Academy and JP2 turned into a massive shootout, but uh, Parrot Academy were victorious as they uh, beat JP2. 66-60 was that score. Washington beat uh, Aiden Grifton 12-6. Uh, Southern Wayne beat C.B. Acock 41 41- to 36. Conley defeated South Central 47-18. Farville Central got a win over North Pitt 34-6. It was Havelock over Rose 35-28. Kinston was the winner over North Lenore 26-6. Southwest Edgecombe lost to West Craven 21-7. And Tarboro shut out Washington County 45 to nothing. And that is a look at your Buccaneer Music Hall scoreboard brought to you by The Buck. It is your beacon of music in the land of the Pirates, and they're open from noon until 2 a.m. with live music every night. Right now during football season, you can join The Buck for Sunday Fun Day with football, food trucks, live music, giveaways, and the largest 4K TV in Eastern North Carolina. You can follow The Buck on Instagram for updated schedules, and we'll see you at The Buck. Now let's head back in to the U.S. Cellular 5th Quarter postgame call-in show. Here's Clip. Thank you, Shirley Rhodes. Da buck. Da buck, da buck, da buck, da buck, da buck, da buck, da buck. Catching up on the uh, chat. Um, David asked, how many games left does Garcia have where he could still redshirt? He's only played in one. Am I correct on that? One. And there's only three left. So he could play, so he in, could all play of, in all of them. If we want to uh, get him some right. time. Um, Do the bowl, does the bowl game count? Probably so. I would imagine that one counts. Good point. Yeah. Um... And I am not going to say that bowl games don't matter that much because Monica <laughs> like kick my ass. So I'm going to just keep it to myself. Um, Papa B asking, has anybody stole a base in the World Series? Jose Altuve stole a base in the bottom of the ninth. Great catch by Nick Castellanos to send it to the tenth. And then JT Real Muto just hit a solo home run. It is Philly six, Astros five mm. in the top of the tenth inning. Billy, uh, you said this during the break as uh, Matt just posted it. Uh, 100th win yeah. by uh, Mike Houston tonight as a college football head coach. One he will remember forever for many reasons. No doubt. And also, was it Chandler that, uh, what, did you see a video of Houston talking to Conrad after the kid? Yeah, yeah, and it's out there on social media. I want to say it's ECU football that has it out there. But, you know, he's embracing Andrew Conrad after the game on the field seconds after he made the kick and says that's the ug- that's the best ugliest kick i've ever seen <laughs> that was a beauty and it went uh right down the middle as far as we're concerned and it was good it was pretty it was fine all right b pays jackson tyler hang on let's go to charlie in pittsburgh hello charlie it was the prettiest daggum pick i've ever seen <laughs> a beautiful sight well, i'm so daggum jacked up tonight i cannot stand it how about these pirates going on the road to a big time opponent full of fans you know that i mean gosh that 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 looked like a an intimidating home atmosphere but goodness gracious they got in there and they pulled it out and the pirates are going bowling and let me tell you what it's only getting started six wins ain't all we're gonna have this year the big 12 revenge tour is only halfway over and we're coming for cincinnati and we're coming for houston and i'll leave it there go pirates all right thank you sir charlie in pittsburgh 
There's the butte, Clark. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go to ne- uh, to Tyler in Greenville next. Hello, Tyler. Hey, guys. Uh, we couldn't convert the Mormons, but we converted on fourth and eight. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> also, suck it back row Chandler. <laughs> a DP show reference. I like that. I like that. <laughs> what do you ca- what do you call me? Back row channel. Back row. Uh, uh yeah. Okay. Anything else, Tyler? Like one of the Danettes. Yeah. Uh, that's it. That's it. All right, that's suck it. it back row. Suck it back row Chandler. <laughs> uh, man, man, Chandler's been getting abused tonight. I'm sorry. Man, it's all right. Chandler. Sorry. Have a donut, man. Chandler, you're my buddy. You're my boy, Blue. You're my buddy. You're my boy. Jackson in Moorhead City. Hello, Jackson. Hey, guys. What's going on? What's up? Well, I am the one that cranked the chainsaw at the two lane. Rum, 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 rum. <laughs> they, got a, they got a way of biting you, don't they? Remind us of that again. It was Billy. What was that again? Clip. You said every time that Billy defended Owen Daffer, you would crank a chainsaw. Okay. Um, um, yeah. All right. Now what? Long story short. <laughs> Which point? Yeah. Get, get to the point. <laughs> Long story short, awesome win tonight. Thank you guys for what you do. And uh, go Pirates. There you go. All right. All right. Great Sweet. call, Jackson. Um, <laughs> by the way, Will, <laughs> last yeah. week we had a stat to consider from from Discount Larry. We'll see you there. We'll see you there. He just texted me this. We have another stat to consider from Discount Larry. All right. He says, mention this. Holton Aylers was sacked 36 times last year. So far in nine games this year, he's only uh, – given up or he's only been sacked 11 times Ooh, that is a good stat so shout out to the big boys up front stat yep. to consider and eating that wings over greenville and familia has done them good apparently uh when it comes to protecting holt nailers all right uh let's Shirley, go to are you eating nuts <laughs> let's go to b and raleigh hello b face <laughs> I, I, I keep i keep watching the uh replay did the ball get tipped at all no it looks they got tipped off his uh, bunion. <laughs> he hit it off his tippy toes. That's about it. You gonna shoot? You gonna shoot me in my pinky toe? <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. What was his name? Um, in Harlem Nights. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What was what was Eddie Murphy's name? Uh, uh, I can't remember. There it is. There's my pinky toe. Go ahead, shoot my pinky toe. <laughs> he shot my pinky toe. <laughs> We're going off the rails. No. You know who uh, who gets to get some credit is Marlon Gunn tonight. Marlon can't. I mean, when Keaton went there, I guess it was the concussion deal or whatever. But Marlon, we got the ball to the center of the field. I said that in the NC State game when uh, we missed the kick. You know, we were on what the I guess the left hash. I said, get the ball to the center of the field for this kicker. These, these freshmen, young kickers. And they did it. And Marlon Gunn, two hands on that ball. You got to give that young man credit. I mean, he dropped that one earlier. You get a lost confidence. He came back in, two hands on the ball, got us in the position to win that ball game. So you got to give him, you got to give him a lot of credit. Billy, uh, you hate a bad angle. Bad, I you hate love bad a good angle. angle. Yeah, you know, I'm a, I'm a center of the field guy. I asked you, okay, what which hash uh, would you want here for Conrad? You said. Middle of the field, right in the middle, <laughs> and they did. Uh, picture perfect. So kudos to, I guess, uh, well, Gunn was the last play, right, running the ball. Yeah, and every kicker is different. Typically, right-footed kickers want it on the left hash mark because if you're gonna, if you're gonna kind of hook it, you're gonna hook it in. Um, and typically, a bad, uh, or either gonna hook it in or you're gonna push it. And that, that's exactly what happened. It was left hash mark tonight on the pushed field goal. And in the NC State game, it was left hash mark pushed right. Yeah, you get that You get that ball. I mean, the way they were knuckled, get it to the center. I kept saying, get it to the center of the field. Get it yep. to the center of the field. And they did. So, good game, guys. All right, Pays. Good to hear from you, man. Thanks for hanging out. There is B. Pays. Uh, great crowd uh, at BYU tonight. And Richard has a theory why. He said, if I had five wives, I'd be at the game, too. <laughs> hey Oh, wow. 
55 grand, I think, is what the attendance was. A little over 55,000. Good call, Richard. Also, William yes, asking, when, when was the last time the Pirates and Reds Commanders both, both won back to back weekends? Oh, wow. I'm guessing a long time ago uh, when Joe Gibbs and whoever was here, uh, Bill Lewis. Steve Logan. Yeah. So, uh, you know, we've had uh, the famous, uh, how about them freaking Pirates in the past Hello, few weeks? Pirates! Uh, this is uh, this is Mike Houston after the game. This is courtesy of Steve and I go on Twitter. How about those freaking bowl eligible pirates? <laughs> <laughs> it's like the I go song. He keeps adding to it each week. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, that is cool that that's becoming his thing. He left out freaking last week. Yeah. I think he made the adjustment. There is a video out there as uh, I believe they went to the uh, East U section after the game, and you hear him say, how about, the, how about those freaking Pirates? I don't like it. Why? Because it's a Cowboys reference. He's a Cowboys Billy, fan. we it's talked not. about this. I know, we did. He said freaking. I know. Jimmy Johnson didn't say freaking. It's different. I know, but it's still the same thing. All right. How about them Cowboys? That's where Houston got it from. I Houston's know. Houston's a Cowboys fan. Okay, all right. I know. As a commander, you should you should not. <laughs> what Come should on, I Captain do as commander? a commander? I don't know what to do as a commander. Not like any cowboy references. All right, fine. <sighs> uh, well, what are we doing, Shirley? Take a break. 317-1250. Nick, Johnny, Matt, Wes, hang on. We are coming to you when we return on the U.S. Cellular Fifth Quarter College Show. Back after this. The best burgers around. Everyone loves a thick, juicy, and fresh burger. Tiebreakers in Greenville, plus the all-new Tiebreakers in Winterville do real burgers better than anybody. So don't just go to any burger-themed restaurant chain. It's time to break the chain and eat local. Tiebreakers, real burgers at its best. Everybody loves burgers. I'm Michael Vaughn with East Coast Grading and Utilities. Many of you know my dad, David Vaughn, and his work in putting in subdivisions all over Pirate Nation. But East Coast Grading and Utilities is not just for those type of big jobs. We're here for the homeowners, whether it's concrete, driveways, hauling rock or sand, whatever you need, East Coast Grading and Utilities can get the job done. Call us at 252-531-7494 or check us out on Facebook at East Coast Grading and Utilities. Buying a home? Then you've got a lot on your mind. Now rising rates? It's a lot. This is Timothy Sawyer, your local Rocket Mortgage Professional right here in Greenville, North Carolina. With Rocket, you have an advantage. You can lock your rate for 90 days while you search for a home. If rates rise, yours is safe. But if they fall within the first three years of buying, you can refinance to a lower rate with exclusive savings. Take the Rocket advantage of calling me, Timothy Sawyer, at 493-0002 today. Dear past, present, and future football watchers, you know why we're here. The football season is back! Woo! That means those pregame barbecues with an ice-cold Pepsi? Totally back! Your perfectly placed football watching corner seat, back and comfy as ever. 18 Sundays of touchdown scoring, Hail Mary throwing, ice-cold Pepsi flowing football action? You better believe it's back! And since that's too amazing to miss a single second's worth, Pepsi is officially giving you permission to always put football first. And when we say always, we mean always. Like when your lawn is looking less like a lawn and more like a jungle. If the game's on, then the lawnmower ain't. And those gutters you haven't cleaned? Today is not their day. Or maybe those in-laws are back in town. Well, better hope they're football fans because your Sunday is completely booked. Long story short, crack open a Pepsi and don't let anything get between you and your football watching. With love, Pepsi, made for football watching. Ah, that's what I like. Are you looking for a home loan? Look no further than Amy Goss at Guild Mortgage. Since 1960, Guild Mortgage has partnered with industry professionals to close loans on time and help millions of Americans realize their dreams. Call Amy Goss at Guild Mortgage in Jacksonville, 910-389-4602. Amy Goss is licensed in Florida, Georgia, Maine, North Carolina, South Carolina, and Virginia. Guild Mortgage Company, Equal Housing Opportunity, NMLS 3274. NMLSconsumeraccess.org forward slash for licensing information. Please visit guildmortgage.com forward slash licensing. Guild Mortgage is not affiliated with Pirate Radio. 
Do you ever talk to yourself about where to eat today, and then you hear, Warren's hot dogs. Then you're thinking, yeah, two hot dogs, chips, and a drink for only six twenty-five would be awesome. Warren's hot dogs. And maybe some homemade lemonade, perhaps a pizza or a sub, and definitely an apple or peach turnover. Warren's hot dogs. Don't overthink where to eat today. Go to Warren's Hot Dogs in Greenville across from Ron Ayers or in Chacoanity next to the fire station. Warren's Hot Dogs, serving the Pirate Nation since 1991. Go Pirates. Pirates. Pirate Radio. Where it is a first go. Pirates. The voice of the Pirate Nation. You're listening to the U.S. Cellular fifth quarter postgame call in show. Here's Clip Brock. <laughs> All right, Saturday morning, and we are taking your calls on the U.S. Cellular fifth quarter call in show. Saturday. Saturday, 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 all right for a fight. All right. Fighting. Yeah, fighting. Saturday night's all right for fighting. We're just as good as Elton John. Be sure to visit one of ECU graduate Brandon Tate's U.S. Sailor locations. Experience the highest standard of customer service next to Little Caesars on Charles Boulevard in Greenville in front of Lowe's Home Improvement on Memorial Drive in Greenville next to Walmart on 10th Street in Greenville and the U.S. Sailor Store in the Greenville Mall behind the Chick-fil-A. All right, Pirates are going bowling. Six wins on the season, six and three. Three games left to go. Nick, Johnny, Matt, hang on. We go next to Wes on the Pit Electric Live line, hanging on in Myrtle Beach. Hey, Wes. Clipper, Billy, how you guys doing? Doing great. Doing great. Hey, guys. Uh, long t- time listener, first time caller. I, I am a Coastal Carolina student down at down here in Myrtle Beach. I've been a diehard pirate for all my life. I, unfortunately, I couldn't go to East Carolina due to my degree, but um, just wanted to get you guys' comments on, on the game tonight. And, hey, we're going bowling, baby. How about those pirates? All right, Wes, thanks for uh, calling in and tuning in, man. Uh, my thoughts are what a wild one. Um And Chandler, you mentioned this during the game. East Carolina would answer pretty much every time BYU scored. Every single time. And then we would get a stop with a chance to go up and couldn't do it. And that was kind of frustrating because every time they'd score and it felt like uh, BYU would get some momentum. And we've talked about how they came in to this game so hungry for a win. And and you thought that, uh uh-oh, if ECU doesn't score here, I I don't know. Maybe I'm, I'm a pessimistic sports viewer. I'm like, this could go the wrong way. This could be two or three BYU scores in a row. Oh, yeah. But, yeah. man, uh, the, for the Pirates to be able to answer the way they did uh, was absolutely huge tonight. Well, I mean, even getting off to the rocky start that they did, first snap of the game, <laughs> they, it looked like they were setting up for a trick play for some sort of reverse. Um, and then they're 10 yards behind the chains. They go three and out, uh, short punt. BYU gets good field position. Uh, they only gave up a field goal, so that made me feel good. But at the beginning, I, you know, I was thinking, man, this is not a good way to start out against a good BYU team on the road. But East Carolina never seemed to get rattled the entire time. Like we had mentioned, they answered every time, and it was just a good back and forth ball game. And I had, I had a feeling that it was going to come down to whoever had the ball last. And uh, the Pirates got a uh, break a bit on that pass interference oh, yeah. call. Uh, which was a good call because it was. He was, there was some uh, Winstead was absolutely mugged on mm-hmm. that play. All right, Matt in New Bern is up next. Hello, Matt. Clip, my friend. Long time no talk. Hmm, Matt. Matt, did your last name start with a W? It does, brother. What's up, man? Long time no talk. I know, buddy. But here... Here we are on a Friday night. You got Billy next to you and everything. There was a segue with the Cowboys references. I thought you guys were going to cut to me. I was ready. <laughs> I'm right down the road from Bullies. <laughs> I figured you were. I was calling, though, you know, because it's a Friday night. The kids and uh, wife are asleep, or kid. Um, but let's talk about this pirate run game, brother. Look at the offensive line getting on the second level and Mitchell hitting hitting it downhill it looked like he was going to spring it looked like cj man <laughs> i was ready i was ready i was on my seat ready for these long rip off runs Had, he, he did have a 31 yard touchdown run and a couple things about mitchell tonight we said we've watching it was he for his stature his size he's tough yeah he's tough he's dude. very tough and we both commented on the 
the patience uh, yes. in the backfield. Looked like an NFL runner yep. with his patience tonight. And uh, and Matt, the way he would kind of dance, not really dance, but kind of survey behind the line yep. of scrimmage yep. and then boom, hit it. It was a beautiful thing to watch. He was surveying, but, picking his spots and waiting for his blockers to set up blocks and find holes. He was doing a great job of that tonight. Yeah, it, it looked like Coach Shank had them boys working, though, because they, they had some holes to get through. And then, uh, you know, Mitchell, he, he was breaking that first tackle, which is what you want to see, which we haven't done. I mean, we he, he's been great this year. Um, but we're back. We're, we're, we're in bowling, bowling time. And the, the run D actually in the first half, if you looked at the run fit, the second half we started missing. But the first half, our team speed, man, it was jumping off the page. Like, we were looking good. That's the fastest I've seen us play maybe since the first game of the season against State. Like, they were where the ball was. We had people. So, that's what I was commenting on. And uh, happy to talk to you. Hopefully, we can catch up sometime here in the near future. Definitely, man. Good to hear from you, Matt. Thanks, buddy. There's Matt in New Bern and uh, good observations on the game tonight. Yeah, and Matt, meant, Matt mentioned the uh, team speed, and I think that was what surprised UCF last week. I agree, because yeah. we were we had talked about it all week. We were, so, we talked ourselves into kind of worrying about UCF's going to be so fast, right. and we hung with them boys. Yeah, so. and, I, and I think for two weeks in a row, the opponent has seen just how fast East Carolina is. On both sides of the ball. Absolutely. 317-1250. That uh, opens up a line. We go to Johnny in Buck Row. Hello, Johnny. Hey, guys. How y'all doing? Doing, doing good. good. Well, Weaver, it looks like I'm wearing a little egg on my face, and I got to be honest with you, I'm, I'm glad that I am. <laughs> you, know, I, you know, a few weeks back after the Navy game, I called, and being all nonchalant, just, you know, all this indirect, you know, negativity about this and that and blah 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 and and of course the following week you know you know big man behind the internet just cranking out all this negativity and blah 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 and and what i what i will say if, if i can save any face on that is you know it's out of passion for the pirates and wanting them to win and, and wanting them to do better and uh quite frankly after the tulane loss first off tulane's a good team I was under the weather, just didn't have the energy to call. But, you know, thank God I didn't. But, you know, we, we come around and, you know, we beat Memphis. Okay, I'm good with that. But then we beat a Central Florida that, that they may not be the Central Florida they used to be, but they're still a good team. They've had our number. But, you know, we went into that game and just manhandled those guys. And I got to tell you, after that game, I was like, hell, we can we can win out. You know, of course, we got good teams in front of us. Don't get me wrong. And and tonight's game, even I got to tell you, even if we would have lost that game, I would have said, you know what, I'm okay with that. I'm good with with losing to a good team and playing good versus winning some non you know nonchalant team like 17 to 10 or whatever. But hey, we came back and won. And you know, we've had so many close games this year. That says a lot about you know, our character and mentality. And uh, so, you know, we got three games left. Two of them are pretty staunch teams. They're going to be tough games. Can we win? Sure we can. You know, will we? We'll, we'll, you know, we'll, we'll wait to see. But, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to switch gears here a little bit. There was an article, I think it was a national article the other day, and they were, it was centered around Tulane and the AAC and talking about how Tulane could be you know, one of the five or six teams in, in the in the bowl game, if you will. And I just started thinking, I said, you know, you know, what and of course, yeah, they mentioned Cincinnati and, and Houston and I think they mentioned the you know, our uh our win or uh, I should say they've been at you know, Central Florida's lost to East Carolina, if you will. But, you know, what if I don't want to count my chicks before they hatch, but what if we went out, what if we win the conference championship? assuming the, the math is right, you know, would they take a three-loss team in that five or six game? I, I'm thinking, I'm kind of doubting that, but, again, you know, hey, we, we got we got a big opportunity in front of us. Really finish out great. Uh, good question. I mean, 
We we talked a little bit about that, but not that exact scenario. We were talking about had East Carolina beaten Navy and NC yeah. State, you're right in the driver's seat for that game. We would be that team. I don't know if you have to be like, do you have to be in the top 25 and the top? I don't think it's top like the group BCS, of five because teams? that's how the BCS used to work. Right. Remember, you had to be in the, in the top 10. But to, to his be. point, it wouldn't. I mean, if you're taking a three or four loss team just because they're in the group of five, that kind of stinks. So right. there's got to be a cutoff somewhere. I don't know what the. Uh, I, I think we've kind of missed the boat on that one this year. But we haven't missed the boat on a great season. I, I no, look, just and, went out, man. And we'll. And tomorrow, uh, I guess we're kind of hoping that. Uh, UCF gives Cincinnati a loss, right? So uh, we, we can maybe stay in the hunt in this conference uh, championship race. All right, uh, Johnny, thanks for the call, man. Uh, 317-1250. Nick is up next in New Bern. Hey, Nick. Nick dropped. Nick. All right, let's see if Clutch is Clutch in Greenville. Hello, Clutch. Yellow. Hello. Hey, what's up, guys? What's up? Hey, damn, am, am I on the radio? Yep. Here? Nah, not yet. Hold on. <laughs> Let me put you through. All right, you're on. Hey, man, appreciate you guys picking up. I didn't expect to get on, but uh, appreciate it. I'm trying to think what to say here, but uh, I will say this. I'll give credit to the boys. Good game. Last three weeks, good games. Um, You know, I heard holding on there, talk about – uh. What did I don't want to say it wrong? He he was talking about um, real, real hate and and fake love, and I mean, I've seen some pictures on on Facebook and stuff. I got no doubts that guy is giving his body and everything to ECU, and we appreciate it. And I, I don't want to feel bad about it, but I mean, everybody in town gets their hopes up about this team every year. I feel like, and and I just really give credit to the guys for the last couple of weeks, man. It's, it's been awesome to see him and uh yeah coach houston you know hey good for him and i, I want to get one of those uh houston halloween costumes i've seen you guys put on online um that's how to dress <laughs> all right uh yeah the freaking pirate uh head coach costume all right uh clutch thanks for tuning in man all right uh and we let everyone on that gets on i don't know why he thought he wouldn't get on the radio but yeah we're putting people through that's what we do let's get one more before break shirley jay in greenville is up hey jay go pirates yes, yes sir arg I'm, I'm gonna keep this one shorter than last week because i know i took you too long past one o'clock last week but uh uh real quick you know we came into this year and um when you start you know preseason, having fun counting wins and losses uh I think most people were thinking, okay, might lose to State, might lose to UCF and BYU, but had us beaten uh, Tulane and Navy. And as it's panned out, uh, we're probably about where a lot of people predicted us record-wise right now, but we got there a little bit different uh, than maybe we thought we would have. So uh, uh, that's one thing just to kind of think about. But um, uh you know, we're talking about the game tomorrow, Cincinnati, UCF. I don't know that it matters who wins. I mean, I'm real interested in watching it. Uh, but, you know, whoever, if Cincinnati beats uh, Central Florida, then that gives them their second loss. We beat them head-to-head. If uh, if Cincinnati um, loses, then um, uh, we've still got to go to Cincinnati and win. Yeah, uh, Jay, so I've got this from a couple of people. Mark on YouTube and uh, Pays. Uh, if, uh, it says if you, UCF beats Cincy and then loses a game after that and they do play Tulane, uh, so let's say UCF loses to uh, Tulane after they beat Cincy and we went out, we're in the championship. Yeah. I mean, so, both still have to play Tulane. Yeah. Uh, and, and, of course, we wanted Tulane to go undefeated. And we want to win out. Yeah. And I guess the wild card is what what, what does Houston do? You yeah. Know? How, what are they still at one loss right now? I, I think so. Yeah. Well, uh, but but us winning out would include a win over Houston. So. I tell you what, I do like that next week we're going to sit home and uh, heal up and get healthy. I think we need that. Need a break. Get our legs under us. And uh, Cincinnati gets to play Navy, and uh, maybe that'll be tough on their legs. And then they got to turn around. 
and play us on a short week on a Friday. So, anyway, All right. that's about it. Hey, go Pirates. Thanks, man. Uh, Jay, thanks for the call. Also, Greg on uh, Facebook and Scott mentioned this. Uh, there's no cutoff to the top-ranked group of five team. ECU wins out. Tulane wins out. Uh, could be 9-3 and three versus 11-1 and one for the right to play in a New Year's Six Bowl. So, wow. Hey, you win some games, and this is the kind of conversations we start to have. Yeah, we're not saying absolutely. it's going to happen, but we're saying it's a possibility, and it is a possibility uh, because, excuse me, your Pirates have won three in a row. Well, I tell you what, Jay hit it on the head, though. It, this is about where a lot of people thought we were going to be this time of the year, but we just <laughs> didn't get there the way every – and I agree with him 100%. Yeah, if definitely. you looked at it before the season, you thought, okay, NC State is – is you know could be a loss because if you remember coming into the season they were ranked still are ranked uh byu was a preseason rank so we thought maybe okay that one's a loss cincinnati um no 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 ucf uh so by this time of the the year we're right exactly record wise where a lot of people had predicted just didn't go the, the way Everybody that took a different it, yeah. route, different route, but got there. Yep. All right, Nick, Irving, and Tom, hang on. We're going to get to your calls. Irving out in Provo. Uh, so we'll talk to our first caller of the night that saw the game uh, when we return on I the... Saw the game. <laughs> Good point. <laughs> You know what? <laughs> it's late. <laughs> I'm going to get a corn stick from Parker. I'm going to get a donut and chill out, and we'll be back after this. The Buccaneer Music Hall is your beacon of music in the land of pirates. The doors open at noon, seven days a week. And the Buck has live music every night, along with football. Monday is open mic night, the first Monday of each month. Tuesday, it's karaoke with DJ Captain Morgan. Wednesday, it's acoustic night. Thursday, it's the dance party with DJ Kid Scene. And live music every Friday and Saturday night with the best bands on the East Coast. Follow the Buck on Instagram for information and schedule of events. This season, party like a pirate at the Buck. Be sure to check out David Price Construction for all of your commercial or custom residential renovation and building needs. Run by ECU alumni, David Price Construction specializes in commercial projects, maintenance on facilities, and large-scale residential renovations and additions. Proud to be voted the Remodeler of the Year by the Home Builders Association of Raleigh Wake County in 2018 and Best Business Commercial Remodel Project winner for 2020. David Price Construction, the proud ECU Home Services partner. My whole business just went up in flames. But my agent was there before the fire was out. We started a plan. I've got 25 employees who could be out of a job if we didn't get this place running again. My independent agent and auto owner's insurance, they made sure we didn't skip a beat. I mean, we didn't miss a single payroll. That's incredible. For whatever lies ahead, we're always there. This is Jeff Gibson with Town Insurance in Greenville. Call me today at 756-8300. Go Pirates! Hi, Pirate Nation. This is Kyle Gaines from Washington Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram. Are you ready for fall? Because we are with our fall savings event. Also, are you tired of other dealers marking up their vehicle over MSRP? Don't worry, because at Washington Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram, we don't do that. Come work with the best salesman in Beaufort County, Stephen Tyson, voted by Washington Daily News. Have the pleasure of working with the best sales staff in Eastern North Carolina during our fall savings event. We have a vehicle for every need. Come check out the all-new design Jeep Grand Cherokee and more. And remember, drive a load save a lot go pirates fall isn't just for football it's a great time for something new to wear as well and russell's clothing in downtown washington has everything you need for game day as well as any other day for men and women whether it's dress casual or even a formal occasion russell's has you covered russell's has served eastern north carolina and beyond for 39 years with quality clothing and personal service we are proud supporters of ecu athletics and invite the pirate nation to shop russell's in downtown washington the home of russell's clothing Go Pirates! Hey, Pirate Nation, this is Holt Nailers for my friends at ArcPoint Labs. Just as I trust my teammates, you can trust ArcPoint Labs to give you quick and accurate results for your laboratory testing needs. ArcPoint Labs provides insights and solutions to enable individuals, businesses, and communities to make informed decisions on their health, safety, and well-being. Visit any of the six Eastern North Carolina ArcPoint Labs locations or go to arcpointlabs.com. Go Pirates! 
Wings Over Delivers. Wings Over Delivers. Wings Over Delivers. If you're looking for wings to be delivered to your home, Wings Over Greenville has you covered with no third party needed. Wings Over Greenville has its own in-house delivery service. Be sure to try the all new tender sandwiches by ordering ahead on the Wings Over mobile app. Open till 3 a.m. on Friday and Saturday. Wings Over has everything to cure those late night munchies. Give them a call at 758-9464. Wings Over Greenville. They deliver. This is ECU assistant football coach Roy Tesh, and you're listening to Pirate Radio, the voice of the Pirate Nation. You're listening to the U.S. Cellular fifth quarter postgame call-in show. Here's Clip Brock. Now with the Pirate Radio scoreboard, here's Shirley Rose. All right, let's run down uh, the uh, scores from the NBA. The Hawks beat uh, the Pistons 136 to 112. The Magic, Magic, excuse me, got a win over the Hornets 113 to 93. Uh, Paolo Banquero. Uh, the rookie for Orlando finished with a double-double. He had 21 points and 12 rebounds in that game. The Cavaliers got a win over the Celtics in overtime, 132-123. to 123. 76ers beat the Raptors 112-90. to 90. It was the Lakers losing yet another game. They are 0-5 uh, to the Timberwolves, 111-102. to 102. Bulls lose to the Spurs, 129-124. to 124. The Nuggets got a win over the Jazz, 117-101. to 101. And it was the Suns over the Pelicans, 124 to 111. That is a look at your Buccaneer Music Hall scoreboard. It is your beacon of music in the land of the Pirates in Eastern North Carolina. You can follow the Buck on Instagram for updated schedules, and we will see you at the Buck. Now let's head back into the U.S. Cellular fifth quarter postgame call-in show. Here's your host, Clip Brock. We got a final in Houston with the Phillies winning game one. How about that? Just went final. So, uh... Phillies up one nothing in the World Series. Thank you, Shirley Rhodes. Welcome back in to the U.S. Sailor Fifth Quarter Call-In Show. Pirates, a winner tonight on a walk-off field goal by Andrew Conrad. Shout out to our guy in uh, Greensboro, Joe. What was his name, Chandler? I want to say it was Joe in Greensboro. Joe in Greensboro. It was introduced the world on a Monday edition of Pirate Radio Live to Andrew Conrad. We had never heard of the guy. So, uh, so did uh, Isaiah Winstead. He wasn't too short. Really Isaiah well Winstead either. was in the studio. He's like, I've never heard of that kid. <laughs> really? <laughs> well, he did. Well, I mean, he just said, I. I he, he, he didn't say was those like, words, know. but he didn't say, oh, yeah, I know Andrew. He's a good guy. He didn't yeah, say yeah. that. So uh, he knew Owen Daffer, I think, at the time, and that's about it. So uh, Andrew Conrad from nowhere to hero uh, for the Pirates. All right, Charlie, Tom, Irving, hang on. We go to Nick in Beulahville next. Hey, Nick. Hey, what's up? Can you hear me? Yeah. Hey, I just want to say, how about them freaking Pirates, man? November 19th. Get your butt in the seat. It's going to be a big game. we got to beat Houston, and don't leave early. Y'all have a good night. Bye. Great call, there Nick. You Thank you. Uh, Scott has a stat of the night, he says. All right, he's calling his shot. He says, in games with bowl eligibility on the line, East Carolina coach Mike Houston is undefeated against blue and white cat mascot teams on the road. Stat of the night. Thank you, Scott. Okay. Marinate on that one for a moment. I also saw a stat earlier today that I and I don't know. I got it. I got a text from somebody, and it said that BYU was twenty three and one after six p.m. kickoffs. Yeah. Um. Now they are twenty three and two. Put that. In I I, re- I seem to remember that when East Carolina went up there a few years back, was it six seven years ago, whatever? That their home record was incredible because I remembered watching that game and they were saying how good the home record was there. Yeah, I mean that that's a that's a good win and the record didn't really show it this year for BYU but they uh we talked about it on the pregame. They were top 15 at one point this year uh before and they play a tough schedule but Yeah, I think great they were win tied there. for 12th yeah. at one point. All right, we go to Provo, Utah and talk to Irving. Hey Irving. Hey, thanks for having me on. Uh that, first of all, I got to say that's the most uh, scenic the scenery here is amazing. It's a beautiful facility. The fans it, uh, couldn't have been nicer to, to us. I, I've never seen such hospitality at an away game um, in my life. I get us ice cream. It's my buddy, Tom, my cousin Tom here. Uh, 
Did you got ice cream? They gave you ice cream. With a whole section of ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> it's because they don't have any booze up there. <laughs> I did hear them. They have 500 people there. They gave like, a thousand people ice cream. <laughs> he can't get over the ice cream wave. <laughs> they gave us ice cream. I, it was amazing. I did hear that they gave free ice cream to East Carolina fans. And then also I did see where BYU's band played I the fight that. song. Yeah, They played our fight song. Somebody had posted some video where you could actually hear them playing the fight song for EC. It was pretty cool. Um, yeah, I mean, you got to love that. And we, we, the fans loved it. We sang the fight song with them and everything. It was, uh, I've never I've, I've never seen anything to come close to this. Have you done it? Yeah. Uh, yeah we, we should play these people as much as we can. Keep them on the schedule. Yeah, we'll do what it takes. Whatever it takes. We're... <laughs> it's work coming out here. It is work coming out here. Hey, we <laughs> I like this dual phone call you got. Are you guys there. on a group chat in the car? Did you drive? Is your friend trying to take the phone away from? I think you? he's on another post game show at the same time. <laughs> uh, did they? Uh, uh, now you know what they're trying to do. They're trying to convert you to uh, being to a, be a Mormon. Yeah. To be a, so did they get the full convert for you guys? Well, no, that's not going to happen. But uh, give them. It's like, look at the sales pitch. <laughs> <laughs> Here's some ice cream. Be, ice cream be a Mormon. <laughs> look at the view. You better look watch out view. for your buddy. Uh, I think he's going back for more ice cream. So, uh, But, no, that's really cool to hear. And I did see that video of them uh, playing the fight song. So, uh, awesome stuff. I, I, they do all that nice stuff. They probably expect to beat you, too, but they didn't uh, tonight. So, uh, great win for the Pirates, Irving. Yeah, yeah. They, they, the Pirates played their hearts out, and so did BYU. It was one of those games where – you got to see two football teams lay everything on the line. I mean, I know it sounds cliche, but that's what I saw. Um, thankfully, thankfully, uh, you know, we do it all. I don't know how that kicked him. I have no idea. Divine intervention. We don't like it. We couldn't tell from the rumor. All right. Uh, Jay on Facebook says this is a redneck conference call. <laughs> I like it. I like this. Good stuff, Irving. All right. When are y'all heading back? Uh, tomorrow night, right? All right, good deal. Well, uh, thanks for tuning in. Hey, man. where are you going to party tonight in Provo? <laughs> yeah, we're going to party in Provo. It's Salt Lake. Salt Lake, yeah, <laughs> okay. that's where the partying happens. All right, Irving, thanks, man. And to your buddy. You're welcome. All right. Irving. <laughs> yes, yeah, sir. Enjoy the ice cream. All right, we go next to Tom in Greenville. Hello, Tom. How are you guys doing? Doing great. How are you, sir? Well, I'm doing great. Shout out to the uh, dancing cougar. That guy had some night moves on the top. Yes. Is it uh, Co- what's his name? Is I don't know, but he's Cosmo got 1.5 million followers on TikTok. Yeah. That was the price of admission. You know, it's really. I, I just can't imagine having to play nine weeks in a row like these guys have. And you could tell, you know, from the altitude they were playing at, they didn't have their. They weren't as quick to the ball tonight, but they did what they had to do, and that was a big win for the program. So. All I can say is go Pirates. You guys have a nice evening. Hey, right, Tom, Tom hit on something that we haven't thought about. That kick may not make it in Greenville. <laughs> the altitude. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a great point. Didn't think about that. You know, like uh, those NFL kickers are hitting 65 yarders in Denver. Well, if you notice, Daffer. We're hitting 33 yarders. Daffer's kicks were all going out of the end zone, and the other kicker for BYU, they were kicking them out of I the end zone. I did notice that. Yeah, yeah. I didn't think about that. Yeah. Good point. All right, thank you, Tom and Weave. For opening my eyes. Charlie is also in Provo. Charlie, did you get ice cream tonight? Oh, I did. That's why we were calling in. They echo everything that Urban said. They uh, they played the fight song during pregame, which is pretty awesome for uh, for us. And then uh, I guess at some point at halftime, they came up through the stands and were passing out ice cream to the ECU fans. So. <laughs> Man, that's awesome. <laughs> it was awesome. I'm a big ice cream guy. I'll go just for that. Yeah, oh, and it was good ice cream. It was like the creamery type ice cream. It wasn't any, you know, generic stuff. It was the, the real deal. Right. So yeah, and we were uh, we were sitting in the ECU section, but right next to BYU fans, and uh, they were they were so nice. And I, you know, like the other caller said, it's both teams played really hard. You hated to see one of the teams lose, but I'm glad it was them and not us. Good stuff. Yeah. How was uh, how many Pirate fans do you think were there, uh, Charlie? Oh gosh, maybe it's thousand maybe uh, 500 okay yeah maybe maybe 500 or so uh but man the the, the stadium experience was great you know, i've been to a lot of you know big time stadiums but the fans uh we were laughing it's like they were trained just like ecu fans when certain things happen they knew exactly 
when to get loud, when to be quiet, what cheer to do, to sing the songs when the you know the music stopped playing. And uh, it was, I'd come back and just go to a game just to watch watch the whole experience. It was really cool. Well, it's because they're all sober, so they're yeah. all you know coherent and they can follow directions. Yeah, you, you, <laughs> there's a lot of truth to that. There's a lot of truth to that. But, but you know, like. We didn't hear them at any point. Yeah, like when I go to home games, you hear fans who just gripe and complain yeah. about stuff, and, and you didn't hear them do that to their to their kids and their coaches. You know, they'd be like, "Oh, I can't believe we did that," but but they were they were behind their team one hundred percent, and and uh, and they were just you know they were competitive, but they were really nice too. So. Well, how how many teams and how many fan bases will show up fifty five thousand strong? On a three-game losing streak, coming off a forty-two to fourteen or whatever it was loss to Liberty, and still yeah. show up. So that that well, says a lot about their fan base. And and then on top of that, because we talked to a lot of the fans beforehand, and you know they kind of echoed that. And but it's also Friday night, and they started football playoffs here, and they're like, you know, we're going to lose some fans because you know they got to go watch their high school kids play, and uh, and yet they still packed it out, and it was you know with their very rabid fan base. Yeah. Good stuff, uh, Charlie. Uh, when are you heading back? And, and b- well, better question Billy asked. What are you doing to a uh, party, celebrate tonight? <laughs> we we are parking and sleeping. Uh, so we drove out here. Oh, wow. wow. How long did that take? Dang. So, well, the way I drive, Billy, it took me two weeks. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> we, we've been exploring some of the area down here, and then uh, we're staying out here for another week. I'm, I'm uh, running a half marathon in joshua tree next week wow driving back home so uh uh yeah we we're, we're milking it for all it's worth charlie are you the most interesting man in the world <laughs> i don't know about that no. I, I don't know but i i need charlie's job because he's got three weeks of uh being able to go and peruse the united states yeah. oh that's called retired ah there you go <laughs> awesome yeah. stuff thanks uh for hanging out with us charlie all right. Thanks, Cliff. Yeah, drive safely, man. Uh, and run safely, I guess. Yeah. Uh, that's pretty cool. Charlie in Provo. I hope the Pirate fans check the bottom of those bowls of ice cream because at the bottom it could have been like, if you eat this ice cream, you're now a <laughs> I know. <laughs> it's like, there's got to be a catch if somewhere. If you take one bite of this, you uh, are now a Mormon. Yeah, so there yeah. might be several Pirate fans that have been converted to Mormons tonight. Nobody is that nice. There's got to be a catch. Like yes, this, it's has got to be a catch. It's like the Santa Claus, but it's the Mormon Claus. <laughs> <laughs> All right. The fine print. Yeah. <laughs> Drew and Jared, hang on. We will get to your call when we return as we head into the uh, 1 o'clock hour here on the U.S. Sailor 5th Quarter Call-In Show. We are back with more of your calls after this. Chico's Mexican Restaurant is where the fiesta never ends. Grab your amigos and head to Chico's every Wednesday for shrimp tacos for $11.99. Plus, Wednesdays means all Mexican imports for just $2.99. Thursdays, enjoy your favorite beef, chicken, or vegetable fajitas for only $11.99. For Mexican food and fun, it's got to be Chico's Mexican Restaurant in downtown Greenville and online at chicosrestaurant.com. Chico's, where the fiesta never ends. This is Dr. Hasty from Orthopedics East and Sports Medicine Center. Our practice has been caring for the athletes at ECU and the residents of Eastern North Carolina for more than 35 years. Whether it's treatment for your sports injury or it's time for that joint replacement, Orthopedics East provides the latest in operative and non-operative orthopedic care. We also offer on-site physical therapy and MRI services, as well as a walk-in urgent care on the weekends from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Call us at 757-BONE or visit us online at orthoeast.com. Go Pirates. Hey, Pirate Nation, Lindsey Gray here with Carolina Caliber. In 1960, my granddaddy started his firearm business right here in Eastern NC. Still family-owned and operated, we have the area's largest selection for outdoor shooting sports and accessories and are one of the nation's top firearm dealers. At Carolina Caliber, we have everything you need from hunting, home defense, and personal protection, including a wide variety for ladies and youth. We buy, sell, and trade. It's a time-honored tradition. Visit us at Carolina Caliber on Fire Tower Road in Winterville. 
Beauty Bar Medispa wants to know if you are ready to fall into beauty October 7th through the 14th. All services and products will be on sale. Botox, filler, painless laser hair removal, facials, RF microneedling, rejuvenating laser treatments to treat brown spots, wrinkles, texture, veins, and skin tightening. And now, the only facility in the area to offer non-surgical under-eye fat pad treatments. BeautyBarMediSpa.com, Red Banks Road, Greenville. Go Pirates! BMS Builders is your premier custom builder in eastern North Carolina. With homes in Blackwood, Mills Creek, Dalton's Cove and Farmville, and Belmar and Aiden, they're constantly expanding. Now to Laurel Glen and Sarah's Way, plus the new duplex community at Abigail Trails. BMS Builders can build the home of your dreams. Just ask Dr. Dennis Ross in Greenville or ECU football coach Mike Houston. They built their homes and they can build yours as well. Call 916-1578 for BMS Builders. Here today with Jeff Stein from Brown and Wood. Jeff, how's the service department? Service is going great. Like I told you before, 2022 is a year of the customer. We've been voted number one dealership in Greenville for three years in a row, and there's a reason why. For service, we still offer free pickup and drop off, so we're trying to make it super convenient for the customer. And right now, our customers are repairing their vehicles more than ever. How can people make a service appointment? They can go to brownwood.net or dial 355-6080. Christie's Europub is the perfect place to relax, grab a bite, and enjoy a drink. Located in the heart of Greenville and just a few blocks from ECU's campus, Christie's offers lunch, dinner, and late night with live music every Sunday. Come and have brunch Monday through Friday from 11 to 3 or Saturday and Sunday from 11 to 4. Scratch cooking takes time, so relax and enjoy a pint at Christie's Europub today. For the latest information, check them out on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram or visit them online at Christie'sEuropub.com. What's up? This is Bryson World, and you're listening to Pirate Radio, the voice of the Pirate Nation. You're listening to the U.S. Cellular fifth quarter postgame call in show. Here's Clip Brock. Back with you on the U.S. Sailor fifth quarter call-in show. Thanks for hanging out with us all day. Had a really fun Bud Light pregame tailgate with the uh, fans today and also uh, here on the postgame show. Calls, lines still locked and loaded. Steve, hang on. Jared, hang on. We go to Drew in Bath. Hello, Drew. Good evening, gentlemen. How about those Pirates? How about, How about them? How about those Pirates? Yeah, I was just going to say... Uh... Man, listening to I was traveling in from Asheville this uh, Friday afternoon, and the first uh, Bud Light pregame show where there was just no football talked about for two hours, and it was awesome. So totally enjoyed that. Thank you, guys. Uh, Thank you. Yeah, man. Uh, I just a couple things. I got to watch a little bit of the game. Not much of it. Listen to it. Um, I noticed Xavier Smith. Not. I don't think he started or played too much. Um, Seeing if there was anything mentioned of that, but then I uh, heard Chance Bates' name played, uh, mentioned a lot. Um, Keaton's health looked like he didn't get much carries at the end of the game. I didn't know if anything about that. Um, Holton, before halftime, was huddling, huddling up his O line and team when we decided to kind of call it quits. And you could read his lips saying, Let's go win this shit, you know. Um, yeah, you can't say the S word. Thanks, Drew. Uh, Keaton. Yeah, he didn't play at the end after that big hit. Yeah. Xavier, man, almost had an interception. Ball hit the ground. Uh, and then he, he left the – it came out of the game, that play, and I didn't really notice the rest of the way. So Yeah. And Mike Houston doesn't talk about injuries at all. And so uh, – And he mentioned Chance. Chance Bates yeah. had a great game. Yeah. He really did. 40 Lates was called a lot. Too. Yep. Yeah. No doubt. So did um, uh, Jeremy. Um, Lewis. Jeremy Lewis. Uh, he laid a hit on the – BYU quarterback um, first half of the game where he just Third down play? Yeah, leveled yeah. him, just came in and leveled the quarterback. Uh, so Jeremy Lewis had a good game on defense as well. All right, 317-1250, we go to Jared in Provo. Hey, Jared. How you doing, guys? Good, how are you? Uh, great win by the Pirates. Um, I'm not sure how to follow up Charlie that's running a freaking marathon, so uh, we'll just <laughs> keep keep riding along the car, but uh, – Everybody's echoed the same thing. Great, great atmosphere, great everything. We got three from Wilmington in here, two from Emerald Isle, and two from Wilson. So it's been a been a great trip. So if you never ever have a chance to get out here, 
you just they like your buddy said, man, just take the time and take the take the <laughs> take the you know money to go out here. But if anybody's a doctor, we did take our 11 year old daughter out of school for three days to come, so if they can write her a note, <laughs> <laughs> she could have an excused absence. That'd be pretty good too. But uh, we got to have a doctor listening somewhere out well, there. I, so I know a few doctors. Help now. out, Jared. Yeah, even yeah. In Wilmington. Just saying. <laughs> I, I know some. I know some doctors in Wilmington. Does she has. She have any poop problems, <laughs> Billy? <laughs> it's in the sales call. I, I yeah. can get you. <laughs> I can get you a a, a a letter from a poop doctor. Yeah. Well, I yeah. Well, hey, that'll whatever it takes. <laughs> <laughs> we we all get to that point. Like. That's right. That's right. <laughs> But yeah, guys, keep up doing what you're doing. Great land with the pirates, and uh, it was a great atmosphere. We it, we probably did have 750,000 people out there, so you know, keep supporting them and 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 travel with them everywhere we can. Awesome stuff, and man, uh, Jared, I think our third caller from Provo tonight. We even all yeah. echoing the same sentiment that. It, uh, it sounds like their favorite road environment to attend, favorite road game to go to. Well, my wife was looking on social media before the game started, and she asked me, she said, have you seen some of the pictures from some of the Pirate fans uh, that have been posting uh, from places around U- uh, Utah and Provo? And uh, one of them, was, of course, was Morgan Ehlers. Uh, and she said, wow, that looks like such a beautiful place. And then we started watching the game. And, of course, they do the beauty shots at the beginning. And we had talked about that. That'd be, She said, I would love to go out there and watch a game. And that that seems, I, I remember there was one time when one of the announcers said, I, I would argue that you couldn't find a prettier atmosphere. I mean, there, there's yeah. some, some beautiful stadiums and beautiful settings, but you're not going to find one better than that. All right. Thank you uh, for the call, Jared. Uh, get home safely. We go next to Steve in Illinois. Hey, Steve. Chris, Weave, Honey Boy, <laughs> the whole crew, I am so happy right now i'm so happy to talk to you last time i called it's been a year i called after the um owen daffer's you know peak win over navy last year kind of emotionally overwrought and i've been thinking about calling thinking about calling thinking about calling but today the pirates are bowl eligible back-to-back years you know the pirates are not only back but we're here to stay I'm so happy. It's just like a culmination of so much pain just all coming through. And this chance that we have going into Cincinnati, so I'm here in the Chicago suburbs. I'm pulling my kids out of school two weeks from now on Friday, and we're going down there to Cincinnati. It's only four hours, no problem. I haven't been to an ECU game in person since I don't know which one was the most recent. It was either the thunderstorm delay against UTEP and oh, wow. That must have been yeah. – or it was the season opener against Central. I was at that game, too. These are a long time ago. I don't um, – and, and then I was at the – I was down in Charlotte, you know, in the South Carolina when we blew the lead 21 nothing mm-hmm. in 2011, you know. But I haven't been to a game since, I don't know, 14 or 15 or whatever one of those first ones I said was. But I'm so happy, and I feel like Mike Houston – finally has the formula to keep us above the six win Mendoza line for the foreseeable future. I, you know, if they can just keep him and keep this train moving, I, you know, we're going to be okay. And it's a, it's a new day. It's a new kind of baseline, a long-term outlook for even higher levels of success, you know, for East Carolina, the success that we've all been craving for so long. And I'm just, I'm just so excited, and I feel like I've been, you know, skeptical and like, uh, you know, are we really there? Are we really there? You know, we're there, man. We're there, and we're going to be there. You know, I'm just, I'm, I'm going to let you go, but thank you. You know, God bless the Pirate Nation. I love all y'all, and I just love East Carolina football, and we're back. It's so, it's so good. Steve, uh, a l- great call. I want you to call more, but you've kind of set the precedent here. You only call after walk-off game-winning field goals. So that's kind of your thing now, I guess. Bye. <laughs> Mic drop. <laughs> uh, he hadn't called since last year against the Navy. Yeah. Uh, calls this year. So Steve is the walk-off field goal guy. And, uh, yeah, he hadn't been to a game. The games he's saying, I'm going to say in about eight, nine, ten years, 
So he'll be able to uh, check him out in Cincinnati. Yeah, that'd be awesome to have a uh, good presence in Cincinnati. And Cincinnati's a fun place to go uh, watch a game. Um, been to a few games up there, and it's going to be a tough atmosphere. But it's uh, East Carolina's got everything in their own, and you know they've got their uh, their fate in their own hands. John Moody says if Cincinnati wins this weekend, they stay in the top twenty-five. ECU knocks them off in a couple of weeks. Mm. We're receiving votes, baby. Back in the RV. Mm. Back in the RV. Loaded up. <laughs> All right. Uh, we have open lines if you want to get in. 317-1250. We'll be back with more on the U.S. Sailor Fifth Quarter Call-In Show. Early Saturday morning edition after this. Country Mart has been locally owned and operated for over 40 years and is your premier country store serving the best cheese biscuits and country food around. Country Mart is open every day and has two locations in Bethel on Highway 11 and in Stokes on Highway 903. Both Country Mart locations are top-of-the-line fuel stations serving shell gas including 93 ethanol-free high-octane gas. Country Mart, fueling you up with great food in your engines with great gasoline. Go Pirates! Hello, Pirate Nation. This is Jamie Lang with Carolina Hardscapes, and we're excited to announce that we're Eastern North Carolina's premier fiberglass pool installation company. We partnered with industry-leading San Juan Pools so that we can build the backyard of your dreams. Whether it's an outdoor fireplace, patio, outdoor kitchen, or now a pool, give us a call at 364-1201 or find us on the web at carolinahardscapesandmulch.com so we can make your backyard the place to be. Go Pirates! Take a hit from a 300-pound linebacker, and you better be wearing pads. Take a hit on the road, and you better have good auto coverage. When you've got North Carolina Farm Bureau Auto Insurance, you've got the best local agents ready to help you bounce back. If you don't, well, you'll probably play football without a helmet, too. In Pitt County, call Carlton Venters or C.J. Messerly at 252-756-3007. North Carolina Farm Bureau Mutual Insurance Company, Farm Bureau Insurance of North Carolina Incorporated, Southern Farm Bureau Life Insurance Company, Jackson, Mississippi, an independent licensee of the Blue Cross and Blue Shield Association. Do you have any real estate questions about buying or selling residential or commercial properties? Are you curious about this current real estate market? Do you need a property manager for all your rental houses? This is proud ECU alum Scott Harris with REMAX Preferred Realty and SD Harris Properties, and I would love to help answer every question you have and show you a real estate experience that will be memorable and enjoyable. Every step of the way, I'm here to make your dreams a stress-free reality. Call me today at 347-1857. That's 347-1857. Go Pirates! Revive Health and Wellness of Greenville is here to enhance your health, assist you with weight loss goals, improve your overall feeling of well-being, elevate your natural beauty, and to give you the confidence that you need and deserve. Locally owned and operated by Samantha Casper, Revive Health and Wellness has a new location and is ready to serve you. Visit them at 2459 Emerald Place in Greenville. Call today to set up an appointment at 350-1805 or go online at revivehealthwellness.org. Work. Hey, Pirate Nation, Shimmer Boutique is your one-stop shop for all your tailgate essentials. This is Holt Nailers, and if you need a Yeti cooler, apparel, shoes, or accessories for the season, Shimmer has you covered. Shimmer Boutique is also the exclusive retailer in Greenville carrying the largest selection of built and broken gear for adults and youth. Be ready for game day and every day at Shimmer Boutique on Greenville Boulevard behind Starbucks and in Winterville across from Lowe's. Go Pirates! Hey, Pirate Nation, this is Holt Nailers. And when it comes to getting your family together, there's no better place than Familia, which is Italian for family. Familia is the place I like to bring my football family, especially my offensive linemen. Whether it's great New York-style pizzas, homemade meatballs, lasagna, chicken parmesan, or delicious homemade desserts, Familia is a winning play every time. For dine-in or takeout, make Familia your go-to play when you have a hungry team. Familia on Fire Tower Road near Pitt Community College. Go Pirates! This is Tim Doust, ECU football special teams coordinator, and you're listening to Pirate Radio, the voice of Pirate Nation. You're listening to the U.S. Cellular fifth quarter postgame call-in show. Here's Clip Brock. Now with the Pirate Radio scoreboard, here's Shirley Rhodes. All right, the Phillies t- uh, take game one of the World Series as uh, they beat the Astros 6-5 to five in 10 innings. The Hurricanes were in action at, in Raleigh 
and they lose to the Islanders 6-2. to two. College football games that will be coming up at noon today. It will be number two, Ohio State taking on Penn State. TCU and West Virginia kick off at noon. It will be Syracuse hosting Notre Dame. Number one, Georgia will host Florida at 3.30, and number eight, Oregon will go on the road to take on Cal at 3.30 as well. Kansas State will host Oklahoma State. And Louisville will host 10th-ranked Wake Forest. And that is a look at your Buccaneer Music Hall School Board, brought to you by The Buck. It's your beacon of music in the land of the Pirates. And they're open from noon until 2 a.m. with live music every night. Right now, during football season, you can join The Buck for uh, Sunday Fun Day with football, food trucks, and uh, live music, along with giveaways and the largest 4K TV in eastern North Carolina. You can follow The Buck on Instagram and for updated schedules, and we'll see you at the buck. Now let's head back into the U.S. Cellular fifth quarter postgame call-in show. Here's your host, Cliff Brock. All right. Thank you, Shirley Rhodes. Welcome back. Scott still throwing out stats to us. He says that uh, if ECU beats Houston, the Pirates will be 500 or better all time against all four of the new Big 12 teams. Mm -hmm. If they beat Cincinnati, they'll have winning records versus three out of the four. He also uh, sends a picture of his young son and says Archer is 3-0 and lifetime, literally, because uh, I guess he's been alive for yep. three Pirate games. And he's wrapped in a uh, <laughs> no-quarter flag. That is pretty cool. Yeah. All right. Thanks for that, Scott. All right. Uh, let's go to Billy in Greensboro on the Pit Electric Live line. Hello, Billy. Hey, how's it going? Uh, great stat right there with the uh, ECU versus a uh, AAC opponents. Uh, did not know that, but uh, thanks for the information. No, I was uh, I was hoping you guys would uh, be up late. I'm sure you would, and uh, I'm thankful you took my call. But, uh, you know, two weeks ago, I thought it was a gut check win. A week ago, I thought it was a statement win. And, uh, you know, this one was a, a, national, uh, a national TV uh, exposure win. And, uh, I, you know... Coach gets coach gets paid to make the, the, the gutsy calls like he did. Uh, I'm sure a lot of folks were scratching their heads while we didn't go for a field goal when we, uh, when we had a chance. And, uh, you know, it ended up working out. But, you know, there's bigger things in mind now. I mean, now we have a, a possible conference championship in play. And, uh, you know, this is, this is the culture that is just looking so good right now with uh with ecu and uh you know I'm, I'm proud of it i know everybody else that's uh, alum or associated uh with ecu is proud of it and it just feels good especially after listening to you know what what has become an absolute b-league team for espn announcing on friday night uh you know whether it was the the complaining about how was there not a block in the back on the punt return and missing the absolute ab 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 abhorrent uh, you know, late hit out of bounds that the referee had to, to call. And then whether it was not the holding call that set up them for a touchdown to go up 24 to 17 at one point. And then uh, the targeting call where even the, the referee that they called in was, was trying to possibly uh, legislate uh, where maybe it wasn't a crown to the, to the head type helmet. You know, it, it, it's almost laughable at how folks that got, they get paid to pontificate on a game, don't understand the game, and they just, it seems like they just go for the name program instead of the actual game that requires research to look at who's playing who. <laughs> All right. uh, as you say that, we just watched the highlights on Sports Center, and Stan Verrett, who's yeah. been there for a long time now, is calling out the, uh, the ECU plays and uh, how. how I think he said Hal Halton Halton Eilers. Halton Eilers uh, runs in the touch. Eilers. So. I, I think he called him Eilers. 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 Yep. Yeah. So you got the uh, the, the crew uh, calling the game and the uh, the sports center anchors, but uh, it's kind of par for the course. Well, of course, and you know, the only only thing they're missing is Eastern. Yeah, yeah. Didn't hear one of those. Well, I I did notice that they had East Carolina on the lower third on the bottom where they had the score. That's what we call it in the TV business, the lower third, instead of E Carolina, like yeah, we've seen good. so many times before. Yeah, took us you seventeen know, years yeah, to get yeah, that. That's out. all. That's all. And, 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 and the thing is, is I've I've literally listened to more inebriated friends, uh, you know, pontificate on a game with more knowledge than I have with ESPN announcers on Friday night over the last few years, to be honest with you. 
Um, and, and it blows my mind how folks get paid to, to do this. Well, guess what? We're going to hear it again two weeks from now. So, Well, I think, what was it? Uh, uh, Josiah Hatfield is supposedly a transfer from Tulsa. Did you did you hear um, Andre they, Ware say that? No, were they talking about Winstead from Toledo? Yeah, but they they yeah. said that. Yeah, did you did you catch that one too? No, I heard um, I heard the Winstead from Toledo, and I was scratching my head at that. Oh yeah, maybe that's what I'm thinking about. Well, that's true. Yeah, but no, no, they they said no because it was it was not Isaiah Winstead. No, yeah. well, I don't know. They also said Keith Mitchell ran the ball, and it was number twenty one or something. Yeah. Uh, something along those lines and so you know they got that wrong too which by the way i hope keaton's okay uh you yeah. know uh heck of a shot at least we have a bye week um and uh, the young man can um you know hopefully be be good to go but you know it just it just frustrates i think it frustrates all of us that you know you watch espn and you're thinking you know this is the flagship of you know sports and they just consistently get it wrong whether it's the name or whether they get their um their stats uh and their opinions or their pontification wrong because they look at a brand name and they go well that's the team that's supposed to win um and uh, you know i i guess maybe that's the way it's been forever but yeah. it, 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 it makes it that much better when we do win because it just shows them that that's that you you got paid to be wrong again all right, Billy. Well, thanks for uh, being up late, and hopefully they'll get it more right uh, in a couple weeks when we play Cincinnati. Yeah, hopefully you guys take care. All right, man. There is Billy in Greensboro. Hey, guess who's on the line, Weave? Uh, Mr. Eilers. Mr. Eilers. Mr. Eilers. Morgan Eilers from Provo joining us. Hello, Mr. Eilers. This is Mo Argon of Ashley. <laughs> <laughs> Mo Argon joining us. Mo Argon. What's up, That's Captain good. Morgan? We have just got back to Salt Lake City and uh, listening to you guys on the worldwide interweb and uh, doing a great job. And, man, what a fun night. Did you guys know we got ice cream? <laughs> That's the talk of the town, boy. I know, right? Hey, you... how many scoops did you get? Did they give you one? Were they being stingy with the ice cream? Were they being very liberal with the ice cream? What, what was going on with that? They got a little, ha- what is, little half pint containers. Oh, that's not bad. It was big time. Yeah, it was big time. They give it to you in a football helmet like you do at the baseball oh, games where you cool. have the upside-down baseball helmet. As a kid, that was one of my favorite things about going to a baseball game. That and Dairy Queen actually had those years ago. Oh, yeah, that's right. Collect them all. Yeah. Yep, collect them all. I collected them all. At the time, I think it was all 26, if I remember correctly. I had all 26 teams. Wow. Thank you very much. Uh-huh. But, no, it was uh, it was a great night, and uh, – you know, so happy for those those guys and offense and defense and you know, hats off to Brigham Young. I mean, the reason they uh, they were ranked in the top fifteen was I think number eleven or twelve beginning of the year, and they didn't give up. Those guys didn't give up all night. And neither did we, and I think the better team won. So we're going bowling. That we are. Uh, and Morgan, I just got a Facebook message. As did you. Uh, weave uh from charlie justice chew that was the charlie we, we didn't find we didn't out that realize was him. that was him until after the fact yeah but he sent us a video of the ice cream being passed around in the stadium that is so awesome how cool is that so there you go i will, I will tell you this chew and his wife sharon they are on a cross-country odyssey yeah they left about two weeks ago and uh, made it to utah and now they're, they're they said they'll be back before thanksgiving so Good for them. Godspeed and have a great trip because, man, they're going all over the country. That's uh, awesome. And, Morgan, uh, I just want to say you look great on television tonight. Yeah. I, we saw you throwing up the crossbones. Yeah. They, you know, I don't get to do that very often, so it was fun. But I will say I was more nervous watching the game without having to work than doing a home game. And yeah, because you get so caught and wrapped up in what you have to do and you kind of get on – you know muscle memory there up in the press box i get it a a hundred percent that i i have found that when i'm not working the games now since this year's kind of been my first year of of not working games and sitting in the stands it's a whole different experience it it really is and you know maybe next year when when holton's not playing i can enjoy it a little bit better but right now man my nerves were shot (laughs) 
And he did a lot of running tonight and uh, running into the end zone. Uh, took some shots. So, Hey, Morgan, speaking of taking some shots, do you know anything about Keaton Mitchell? Did you see him come off the field? I, we noticed that uh, he didn't play a lot of the late fourth quarter uh, after that I, hit to the head. The last, I don't think he played the last two drives. However, I will say after the game we were waiting in, in the tunnel near the tunnel where the team would come in and out and go into the locker room and he came out of the locker room, uh, went down on the field with a bunch of guys, was joking around, came back up, and uh, seemed to be in good spirits, was taking pictures and high-fiving. And, uh, you know, he didn't look any worse for wear. Again, I'm not a doctor. I didn't see anything, you know, after he took that hit. But I did notice that he, you know, he I don't think he played the last two series. I think Marlon was in there. And, uh, you know, he did a great job out there. And, and we did what we had to do to come out with a win, but hopefully that Keaton, uh, you know, is okay and that there's nothing wrong. And the next two weeks, you know, he can, you know, catch you. Know, all these guys need to catch a breather and yeah. get some rest because they're all banged up now. They have nine straight weeks, and it's it's been a long grind, and they need a little bit of a break right now. And uh, hopefully they'll have a good flight back to Greenville tonight. And I don't know what time they're supposed to be back in Greenville. I'm thinking probably 4.30, 5 o'clock, 5.30, something like that, depending on when they leave. But um, I've heard some folks are going to meet them at the airport. So, Well, Jay was asking, he asked us to ask Morgan what time, and sounds like Morgan doesn't know. Uh, on the YouTube chat, Robert says the team ETA is 6.15 from Brian Medor, so I don't know where yeah. he saw that, but – uh, we'll we'll see Meador if we is can. usually pretty spot on. Should with I just us. text Bailey and Medor and see what they say? And yeah, maybe we'll go that route. Uh, Morg, thanks for joining us, sir. Have fun tonight. You do a great. You guys do a great job. And by the way, it's only uh, eleven nineteen here in Salt Lake. Oh yeah, that's right. That's right. So it's early for you guys. You go. You can go out and Provo and party. Yeah, that's work. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Morg. See you, man. Hey, hey. by the way, real quick, though, my wife said awesome pictures that you guys uh, posted on Facebook. She was jealous. Man, I'm going to tell you something. Yeah, so we're going to do more traveling tomorrow and just driving around looking at things. I've, I've seen some pretty places, but the, the countryside around Salt Lake City and Provo, and we went to, uh, what is it, Park, Park City yesterday. And it's just absolutely gorgeous. The it's, it's it's beautiful. One of the most beautiful places I've ever seen. And it's I highly recommend if you ever get a chance to come out here, just take a few days to do some sightseeing, drive around, and just enjoy what nature has to offer. Because man, it's gorgeous. All right, really gorgeous. Sure, it's even prettier after a win. No doubt. It's so much sweeter. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Morgan. We'll see you, man. You guys be safe. Talk to you later. Yeah, have a good trip home. There is Mo Argon. How do you say his name? Mo Argon Eilers. Mo, Mo Argon Eilers. Yeah. A uh, lot of folks still hanging out with us late night. I'm like, what? what is going on with all you people? Well, Gregory points out, hey, he says it's only 10, uh, 15 out here west where I'm at. There so he is. said, keep going for a few more hours. Not. <laughs> so Gregory's on uh, West Coast time. He's chilling. He's, he's doing good. Hey, uh, shout out to uh, Dave Jordan. He's he's watching after a late night on the Man, air. How about that? Big Dave Jordan fan, and I listened to him for years. Uh, or sorry, watched him for years, and then met him uh, at some event. Uh, it might have been a pirate radio party or something. But uh, he talked about. He's a huge sports fan. Yeah. I didn't realize. We, oh, yeah. we talk, he's a Pittsburgh him, guy. Yeah. He's Steelers fan. <clears throat> I'm hoping his Steelers come up with a big win uh, on Sunday. Win the battle of Pennsylvania. Right. Yes. That'd be great. All right, William in Washington D.C. Are you there? Yes, sir. How y'all doing tonight? We're great. How are you? Doing pretty good. Billy Weaver, I finally made it on the news, buddy. Sir. You know who this is. Who? <laughs> Wait a minute. Who is this? William in Washington, D.C. Oh, hey. What's... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I finally made it on the news. Y'all got to get the snowman on here to do some commentary. Yeah. <laughs> uh, great game tonight, man. It reminded me of back in the day when I played a lot of fun to watch. Uh, it's good to be on prime time again. Um, very thankful to be a part tonight, and uh, hats off to the play. Everything they've been through, and we're still going to go through the rest of the season. I think it was uh, a big thing. We're finally bowl eligible again, and I think it's going to be a great end to the season, hopefully. 
Hey, William, uh, you and a, one other uh, caller had kind of touched on that just a, bit, a little bit. Big win because it was on primetime television Friday night. Yeah. And when you talk about recruiting, and, you know, people know the BYU name, of, of course, all across the country. Maybe not the East Carolina name as much, but this is the steps you got to take knocking off a of BYU on national television, primetime, bowl eligible. That's going to be big for recruiting. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. It's all about that marketing strategy and getting that yep. East Carolina name out there and, you know, getting those big recruits in and getting those transfers in now, too. The transfer port- portal is huge. If y'all remember, I transferred from uh, NC State and came over to East Carolina, and back then it was hard to do that. Nowadays you can get good players from, you know, the bigger SEC, ACC schools as well in the transfer portal. So college football is at a much more um, – even playing field than it used to be and i i like it because i had to go through that and i think we've got a great opportunity if we can continue to win games continue to market our school i mean greenville is a special place i miss it every day and i'm thankful to be a part of the program uh, and one more question for clip i love the hat uh where can i get one well, this particular hat is right now one of one. Is um, it really? Yeah, it's uh. Because I know that there's a couple with the white in the back, the trucker hats. Right, black. but this is the only fitted. Uh, so it is. Uh, well, Billy, if somebody wanted your shirt earlier, you said everything's got a price. So yeah. I could say this one, but uh, I don't know, William. If we if we get enough people interested, we could possibly put them on the market. But right now, they are not available. Well, well, this one is if I can steal it, depending on what your head size is, if yeah. it fits, because it's a fitted hat, I can, you know. Seven and a half here. We so. can make a deal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's the size I wear. So go- uh, <laughs> all right, nobody, nobody's getting this one. But, uh, yeah, man, stay tuned. Maybe we'll put them out there for sale. Absolutely. Y'all have a great night. Appreciate it. All right. Thanks, you too, man. Thanks, man. Uh, William in D.C. All right, let's go to Jr. in Haymarket, Virginia. Haymarket. Hey, Jr. Hey, what's up? Hey, hey. Am I am I on the air? Yes, sir. Uh, okay. Hey, I'm a listener, not a caller, but I just feel compelled to um, give out some love for uh, Ty Moss, who, uh, in my opinion, saved the game when he recovered Josiah Hatfield's kickoff return fumble. Hmm. Good call. Yeah, yeah, First, good that call. has not been brought up tonight. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That could have been a I huge play. Time that he has recorded any kind of stat at all. Chandler, why'd you raise your arms? Where is he from? Remind us. He is from Whiteville, North Carolina. All right, Whiteville, North Carolina. Whiteville Wolfpack. Whiteville Wolfpack. Oh. Our ass tonight. But um, also, special teams in general, uh, Luke Larson only had two punts, but he put one inside the 10, yep. which is yep. uh, a nice, you know, something that doesn't usually happen. So that's awesome. And, um, you know, obviously the game-winning field goal by Conrad. And... Uh, uh, Malik Fleming, somebody needed to tell him that the altitude, the ball was going to carry five to seven yards further. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He, but he did a great job of um, recovering and, and catching that ball at the two-yard line and saving disaster. Yeah, he did. He did muff it a little bit, but he yeah. regained control of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, that's it for me. I, I just appreciate everybody's efforts tonight and great win. And I, I and uh, let's go beat Cincinnati. All right, great call, Jr. For this late in the show, uh, new topics to be brought up. That is, uh, yeah, I hadn't good, thought, I hadn't thought about that. Good, uh, very perceptive there. So thank you for that. All right, if we have not touched on something that you want to hit on here uh, this Saturday morning, go ahead and call in three one seven twelve fifty. More to go on the U.S. Sailor fifth quarter call in show. We are back with you after this. While you're sleeping, our whole hogs are slow cooking over wood to create that bite that Eastern North Carolina is known for. I'm Sam Jones, and for more than three generations, my folks have been the torch bearers for what whole hog barbecue is supposed to be. At Sam Jones, you'll find plenty of smoke, but no mirrors. Everything, and I mean everything, is made fresh daily, including our sides, sweets, and sauces. Come on over and see us at Sam Jones Barbecue, and I bet you'll be able to taste our passion in just one bite. Sam Jones Barbecue, Fire Tower Road. Love is never having to say you're sorry for your internet. Because with Metronet, you get fast, reliable, 100% fiber speeds you'll love with unlimited data so you can stream, study, surf, and game on all your devices simultaneously. No lag times or buffering. Metronet offers student deals. Get 100 megabit internet for just $39.95 a month. Switch to Metronet today 
at metronet.com forward slash switch. Metronet, love your internet. Do you need custom t-shirts, apparel, or promotional items for your business, organization, or event? Keep it local. Print it local with University Sportswear. University Sportswear ENC.com is your one-stop shop for all promotional products for your business. With over 1 million items to shop from, University Sportswear ENC.com offers high-quality products at prices to fit any budget. Visit University Sportswear ENC.com for contact information and to get shopping. University Sportswear ENC.com, the official sportswear provider of Pirate Radio. This is Braxton Green with Angel Oak Home Loans. If you're looking to purchase a home, it is still a great time, and being pre-qualified before you begin shopping is an advantage. At Angel Oak, we offer a wide variety of programs ranging from conventional, government, and portfolio loans that can fit most financial situations. To get started, contact our experienced team of Talbot Green, Joanne Weir, Wanda Hager, or myself, Braxton Green, at 751-2060. NMLS 1719250, Equal Housing Lender. Ahoy there, mateys! It's Captain Jack Spare of R&R Tire Express, your local tire and wheel shop in Greenville, offering affordable, easy payment options for easy ownership, savvy? Our customers love our treasure of tires and wheels, easy payment options, and customer care package, too. To learn more about R&R, stop by 3920 US 264 or rnrtires.com. Welcome to US Cellular, where new and current customers choose any phone they want for free. Free? Even the one with 5G and lots of storage? Free. And the one with the latest everything? Free. At US Cellular, any phone you see is free, whether you're a new or current customer. US Cellular, America's locally grown wireless. Terms apply. See uscellular.com for details. This is Brandon Tate, owner and operator of Atlantic Wireless, an authorized agent for US Cellular since 1997. Visit AtlanticWireless.com to find the store near you. We go beyond the call. The Rick House is Eastern North Carolina's premier American-style restaurant and bourbon bar with daily specials. And here's the lineup. Mondays feature $7 margaritas and half-price appetizers. Tuesday is stuffed seafood night. Wednesday is date night. Thursday is roasted smoked lamb chop night. Fridays is prime rib night. And Saturday is Italian night and is also Fred and Wilma night with our 36-ounce bone-in tomahawk steak just like the Flintstones. And on Sunday, it's our legendary brunch from 10 to 2. The Rick House, American provisions and spirits 710 Red Banks Road beside the bowling alley in Greenville. Pirate Radio is the voice of the Pirate Nation. You're listening to the U.S. Cellular fifth quarter postgame call in show. Here's Clip Brock. All right, back with you on the U.S. Cellular fifth quarter call in show. Didn't know we were back. We're back, and we're back. And we have open lines if you want to jump in. And it is uh, last call for your call. We got one break left to take. We do need to get our drive of the game weave. Ooh. And uh, I am not prepared. Um, off the top of my head, probably the answer drive in the third quarter after making uh, twenty four twenty four. Yep, yeah, yeah, to tie it up at twenty four. Okay, I'll get the uh, the details on that drive get the momentarily. Deets. You're gonna get the deets, yes, sir. Because uh, that's just off the top of my head. I'd have to look. There might have been, might have been one better. Well, uh, it could be the game winning drive. Sure. Which yeah. Which at the time, you you will it was short. It, it, it would have been a short drive. It's on tape. Uh, we can go back and give our feelings on it. I I was scared to settle for three. Y'all were pretty okay with it, especially I was, the I was way confident. it turned out that they got it right down the middle of the the field. In the yeah, middle of the field, yeah, I think that was clutch. All right, the drive we're referring to to make it twenty four twenty four with seven oh seven left in the third quarter went six plays, seventy five yards, two minutes, fifty one seconds. That's the thing about their drives tonight. We've none of them they were long. They were quick. I mean, they were long as far as down the field, but right. time wise, six plays, seventy five and one fifty four. Uh, the other touchdown, seven plays, 68 yards, 319. That was your longest time drive of the game. And then you've got a six play, 75 yard, 251. Because, Billy, uh, explo- like big plays, explosion plays getting down the field. Well, how about this? That we talked about pregame. 
the lo- the the most plays. Ten came, plays. It was ten plays in that f- final fourth quarter drive. Yeah, forty six yards, two twenty six. Maybe that was the drive. Yeah, it game. was a short drive as far as yardage, but it was ten plays. Uh, because if you remember, they got the ball back. Um, with just a couple minutes, what three minutes left to play or something like that, and you and no, BYU had like a uh, third and manageable, and that was a huge stop by the right. Pirates, getting yeah. them, holding them one yard short yep. Yep. of that first down. Uh, so you got a few to choose from there. Let's go with the last one. Ends on uh, a winning field goal, ten plays, forty six yards. Brown and Wood drive the game, brought to you by Brown and Wood on Greenville Boulevard and online. Uh, you can check them out on Greenville Boulevard, also online, brownandwoodauto.com. All right, we got so the drive of the game been the field goal. You know, if they drive the ball, drive through the ball, and it gets to get it. Yeah, no. Yep. Maybe. No. I get it. Maybe. Okay. I'm just I'm bringing it all in. Okay. I'm taking it all in. <laughs> all right, Leonard is up in Greenville. Hey, Leonard. Hey, what's up? Uh, gonna keep it short because I know it's late. Um, just a gutsy win tonight. It was uh, BYU. I think gave us their best shot and. I think that's a tough place to play in the climate and the altitude and uh, glad the guys stuck with it. Got some big stops there at the end of the game and uh, made that field goal, which felt really good. I'm glad for Pirate Nation, and uh, I hope everybody shows up for the last home game uh, against Houston. Hopefully we can get by Cincy, and um, you know we'll be undefeated in the Big 12. Uh, so... Y'all have a good night and go freaking pirates. Do we pull a page out of UCF's book and put up a Big 12 Champions banner if oh, we uh, wow. go for an O-Leaf? Wow. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. There's at least got to be some T-shirts that are floating around somewhere. Yeah, no doubt. Maybe Pirate Radio will make some. All right, we go to J.K. in Pinehurst. Hey, J.K., guess what? I had the Pirates uh, money line tonight. You know what, Clip? I, uh, I lost a lot of my money after last week's winning cashed out a little bit so i was just rooting as a fan tonight but i'm, I'm happy for- hey i understand that too it happens to the best of us i put so i put my last 200 on tennessee to win it all at 16 to 1 oh wow all, those all right go falls yeah but i would just say um another game where i'm pacing around the house every game do we ever have a besides last week? Do we ever win a game where it's just easy? Not yeah, really. last week. That's why last week was so dang <laughs> nice. fun. Yeah, and, uh, yeah. I, I mean, I can't remember one where we just sho- shoved it down their throat and won one. I mean, every game it's coming down to the wire. I, I don't. I've been a fan for about fifteen years now. I don't. I don't remember a handful of wins where we just have it easy. Well, I mean, we're we're East Carolina. We're playing good teams, and that's kind of how it's supposed to be. I mean, it's just, you see a lot of games like this, and I'm just glad. To, we, we've been on the wrong side of blowouts, oh, so yeah. I'll take some of these uh, many of nail those. biters. No, I agree. And, I mean, I thought it was going downhill after we missed the field goal in the fourth quarter, but defense bowed up, and, I mean, I think we're on the right track, and the, the bye week's coming at the perfect time. Oh, no doubt about that. These guys definitely uh, need and deserve a, a week to, you know, get healthy and heal up. Yeah, Halton Eilers definitely needs to heal up a little bit, too. He's been playing, uh, you know, his, he's had that bum shoulder all year. Uh, he's been nicked up, bruised up, and beat up, so he's he's going to need some time. Keaton Mitchell, from what I understand, somebody was saying that uh, – Jeff Charles, uh, they did, you know, I, I, it was probably probably Marty Fuhrer that interviewed him after the game on the radio. Said he was a little dizzy afterwards, but he was feeling okay. So I mean, guys like that need to heal up a little bit. This is gonna, this this comes at the perfect time. You wouldn't have looked at the schedule and thought nine games in would be a good time to have a uh, off date, um, but it, the way it's shaping up, this is actually probably the perfect time to have the off date. For sure, I think we can get Cincy at the right time and take him out and I'm about to head out but can I get some of that ice cream from BYU (laughs) I'm hoping somebody put some in a cooler and are transporting it home no kidding alright boys have a good one you too speaking of heading home uh, Bailey and Medor unsure at what time they will be arriving landing Brian uh, said well they're both Brian Brian Bailey said originally 6 a.m. Medor said your best bet 
might be tracking the flight. Uh, he said flight 4767 Allegiant. Allegiant. So oh. how do you say that? Allegiant. 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 Like right the stadium yeah. uh, in Vegas. Uh, 4767. So get I on guess, your I guess you track. can do that on, yeah, that's, yeah. A, is it an app? Uh, app, website. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, let's go to Wit in Whiteville. Hello, Wit. I, how about them pirates? Can I just get? How about them damn pirates? Yes, sir. I apologize. That's all right, man. That's all right. That one you can say. Uh, how do y'all? How do y'all feel about the usage of Marlin gun in just the overall offense? Well, I Billy was, wanted to see more of them on those short yardage runs. He was screaming about it. Absolutely. On the third and short where they came up short uh, when they ran the ball with uh, Keaton Mitchell. And then uh, on fourth down, right after that, Keaton Mitchell up the middle, and uh, he didn't get the first down. I was screaming to put Marlon Gunn in there because he's more of a physical back that can run between the tackles. Um, I don't know if the, the, um, the play calling – uh, situation was well if we put marlin gun in in that situation it's going to tip them off they're going to definitely know we're running the football but i don't care i think marlin marlin had showed on one of those uh runs after that yep where he just put his he dragged two defenders another couple yards and i'm thinking at that point that's what i wanted to see in that short yardage situation and we didn't so i i, I hope to see marlin in more short yardage situations and then also, how do you feel like he is developing as a blocker? Because I feel like, well, who would you rather have? If you're going to run those RPO plays, why would you not want Marlon Gunn on the field in those types of plays instead of Keith Mitchell? And then why do they not involve Keith Mitchell in the pass game in those situations also? And have both of them on the field. Well, and and that's that's a good question too because w- with the RPO and you having Keaton Mitchell on the field, he's more in those situations. He's not a straight up blocker. He's more of a chip guy where he's going to chip and then go out into the flats to be available for that short pass and then get him out in space. So in those in those situations on the RPOs, uh, Keaton Mitchell's in there not to be what we would think of as a true blocker, but more of a get your shoulder on a guy, get in his way, uh, and then get out in the, in the flats for the pass. And I hear what you're saying, Witt, but if Keaton is got his full oxygen and good to go, I, I don't want him off the field a whole lot. I, I do like Gunn in the short yardage. Yeah, yeah. And I will say, too, that uh, even Coach Houston shouted out Marlon Gunn for his pass pro ability yeah. as a true freshman. Very impressive. Okay. I, I tell you what, I like Marlon Gunn now. I love him for the future of this uh, football team. Yeah. Hey, hey, roll tires. I uh, appreciate y'all's time. Y'all have a good one. All right, man. Thank you, Wit. All right, last call for your calls 317 1250. We're going to come back and wrap it up here on a Saturday morn. Back with you after this. Hey, Ellerby, have you tried our new menu at Clean Eats? I was planning on going there today. Tell me what's new. First of all, you're going to love our new melts. A melts is a quesadilla folded over like a sandwich full of things like beef and queso and chicken parm. Scott, tell me you got more. Man, I do. We have pretzel bites with queso, our fabulous meat and taters wrap, and we even have Clean Eats mac and cheese complete with beef or chicken on top. It all sounds awesome. I'm going to head over there now. Fantastic. I hope to see everybody at Clean Eats, 805 Red Banks Road, Arlington Village. ASAP Party and Tent Rentals is your one-stop shop for weddings, anniversaries, corporate events, family reunions, birthday parties, or any celebration with friends and family. ASAP Party and Tent Rentals has the widest selection of tents, tables, chairs, linens, china, concession equipment, bounce rides, games, staging, wedding equipment, dance floors, and so much more. At ASAP Party and Tent Rentals, we help people get together. Call today at 756-7903. ASAP Party and Tent Rentals, locally owned and operated on Diamond Drive in Greenville near Agri Supply and Equipment Plus. North Carolina State Parks is proud to announce that they have partnered with the Hometown Strong Program. Our visitor centers are now equipped with public Wi-Fi to help kids with school. Remote learning has become a critical public health measure in maintaining social distance and continuing to educate our young people. Take advantage of Wi-Fi and a hike at Goose Creek State Park or a day trip to the beach and access remote learning at Fort Macon State Park. For more information, visit hometownstrong.nc.gov. 
This is John Gavigan with the Gavigan Agency. Our top priority is doing what is best for our members. Whether you're buying a new vehicle, a new home, protecting your family with life insurance, or filing a claim, our agency will be there every step of the way. Our goal is to become a trusted advisor for you and your family for all of your personal and commercial insurance needs. Give us a call in Greenville at 756-1400 for a car, home, business, or life insurance quote today. And give us the opportunity to show you the benefits of doing business with someone Someone who cares. Hi, I'm Annalie Newhoff. And I'm Rob Campbell. And, and we, we are, are with, with Copy Pro. Pro. We have been locally owned and operated here in eastern North Carolina for almost 50 years. Copy Pro is the leader in office technology. Does your business struggle with keeping printing costs low or producing professional documents? Here at Copy Pro, total customer satisfaction is our number one priority. We have a variety of solutions to help reduce your printing expenses and make your business more productive. Call us today at 1 800 682 6558 or online at copypro.net. Copy Pro. We are the professional office systems people. The convenience of Pitt Greenville Airport is waiting just outside your front door. Service is back, so you're connected to destinations worldwide through flights from American Airlines. Plan your next trip. Book your flights today at flypgv.com or aa.com. Avoid the long check-in lines and congestion at the big airports and fly local at PGV. Fast, convenient, and close to home, PGV has American Airlines flights perfect for your next trip. Book today at aa.com. PGV, where the pirates fly. Winslow's is now Fifth Street Hardware Restaurant and Tap Room. With a brand new look, Fifth Street Hardware also has a new menu and serving lunch and dinner every Tuesday through Sunday and brunch starting at 1030 on Sundays. What else is new? Well, they have poker every Tuesday night, Trivia Wednesday with DJ Captain Morgan, and on Friday and Saturday nights, they have live music open till 2 a.m. serving light appetizers all night long. New look, new name, same location on Fifth Street. Follow them on Facebook and Instagram for more specials. Fifth Street Hardware Restaurant and Tap Room. Pirate Radio. We are not coming together to just be average. We want to build a program that will year in and year out compete for the American Athletic Conference Championship and compete nationally against any and everybody. The voice of the Pirate Nation. You're listening. You're listening to the U.S. Cellular Fifth Quarter Post Game Call-In Show. Here's Clip Brock. Now, with the Pirate Radio scoreboard, here's Shirley Rhodes. All right, here's a quick rundown of area high school football from last night. Parrot Academy beat John Paul II 66-60 on a walk-off uh, touchdown by Parrot. Uh, Washington beat Aiden Grifton 12-6. It was Farmville Central over North Pitt 34-6. Conley beat up on South Central 47-18. Rose loses to Havelock 35-28, and it was Kinston over North Lenore 26-6. And that is a look at your Buccaneer Music Hall scoreboard brought to you by the Buck. Is your beacon of music in the land of the Pirates? And they are open from noon until 2 a.m. with live music every night. And you can follow the Buck on Instagram for uplate, uh, updated schedules. And we'll see you at the Buck. Now let's head back into the U.S. Cellular fifth quarter postgame call-in show. Here's your host, Clip Rock. The Buck. Hey, we've got uh, 16 more minutes to party at the Buck. Oh, yeah. We're open until 2. Get out there while you can. I know. Hurry up. Shirley, who won the Farmville Central North Pit game? Farmville that would be Central. Farmville Central. The Jags. Yes. All right. Both of those teams, Billy, having better than expected years. So, shout yeah. out to Coach Cook uh, for the Jags and, of course, C.J. Wilson with the Panthers. I, yeah, that's right. Uh, I get to hear the Jag, I mean, the uh, Farmville Central Jags a lot. I hear them practicing all the time. You hear the band, I'm sure, on Friday nights. I hear the well. band on Friday Pretty nights, cool. see the lights. Yeah, it's right there. Stuff. Yeah, I can walk right across the street and go to the games. All right. Uh, we have Igo Igloo joining us from Provo, Salt Lake City. Where you at, Igo? Yeah, making the the forty five minute drive from Provo to Salt Lake, and I was enjoying the the show so much. Uh, I didn't want it to end, so I figured I'd call in and, and keep it going a little longer. I need some company on the drive. Ah, uh, well, we'll keep it company. We appreciate it. Uh, first question, I go. What were the beverage options in the press box? Uh, because from what I understand, no caffeinated beverages, right? So, what were the options for you? So. Maybe they don't sell caffeinated beverages in the in the concession, but we had every just about every soda. Oh, uh, so we had full caffeine, no coffee that I saw, but I'll take it. And, and we had steak, we had Korean beef, we had chicken. What? Damn. Uh, we, we, yeah, we got a Brazilian steakhouse hooking us up with. Are you serious? Wow. 
Man, those yeah. BYU. Man, ice cream in the fans, Brazilian steakhouse in the press box. And they were just handing out, uh, I guess what they call the cougar tail, which is just some piece of oh, yeah. dessert with a, with a what ton is it? of uh, chocolate on it. It's like a piece of bread with chocolate or some some sort of dessert. I've seen it on games. Uh, let me see if I can what, find what, it. What is it called? The cougar what? Cougar tail. Cougar tail. Cougar tail. Yeah. And... Uh, let me see if I can pull up a picture. <laughs> that that just be, looks that, inappropriate. That, that's not a cougar tail. But, yeah, they got it in the entire uh, – in the bag there. That's I, like a, that's I like go, a sub. I go – don't <laughs> don't Google cougar tail. <laughs> well, it's 1.48 a.m. You can Google this now. Uh, Steven, man, what an effort. Wait, uh, is it really that big? <laughs> yes, Billy. Yeah. Oh, my God. We got to move on from this, Weave. We've got to move on. Uh, how about uh, Coach Houston after the game? I go, you got some good uh, video, right? Pictures. Uh, he was fired up. Yeah, yeah, he he was fired up. The, the whole players, man, everybody. Obviously, you get a win like that on the road in that environment, you overcome so much adversity. It was very reminiscent of last year's Memphis game, which was also the sixth win. It, it wasn't quite as much of a celebration, but I did notice a number of the players came back on the field to do like TikTok and Instagram and all that stuff for their social media. And the coach Houston, he was fired up and it was win number 100 for him as a head coach at the college level. So he got, he had the game ball. He, he was clutching it the entire time through our interview, through the interview with Jeff Charles, the interview with Brian Bailey. So uh, he was fired up and you know, I just, I asked about the, the fourth down decision and I was saying in the press box, that they probably should have punted it because if you don't get it, you're basically giving them the ball in the Birch field goal range. And I just thought it it took a lot of guts to go for it there. And um, You know, the, it was clear pass interference. You know, you can say whether or not it was the, the best decision to throw that ball, but C.J. Johnson was not in the game. Who else are you going to throw to in that spot outside of Winstead, maybe Ryan Jones? Uh, so, you know, you kind of throw it up to your playmaker, and, and luckily the guy grabbed Isaiah, and it was a clear P.I. call. Definitely a clear P.I., and I agreed with you, I go. I was saying punt, punt the ball, and let's uh, let's try to get to overtime. But they went for it. And, boy, there was a lot of coverage there. I don't know if that guy didn't tackle Isaiah. He would have had a shot at it, but they had the safety right over top. I don't mm-hmm. know if that guy needed to interfere on that play. Well, that's the thing. When he threw it in the air, I was like, that's not going to work. Yeah. Safety was coming over. He had it red, and. I guess it's just one of those situations. You know, they were playing pretty tight coverage off the line, and and Isaiah got pretty good position. Um, But you got to take your chance, I guess, in that spot. And and Holton did. He trusted his guy. Got the call, luckily. And I know they like that matchup. So it was a uh, obviously a big play. What was it like watching that last field goal live? Uh, It was uh, that had to be the trajectory, the uh, the elevation of that kick, one of the shortest all time made field goals as far as how low it was off the ground. It was uh, it was incredible. Yeah, and I, I talked to a fan after the game, and he said that Conrad told him that he kicked the ground before he made contact with the ball. That makes sense. Makes sense, <laughs> yep. yep. Yeah, it, I knew there was something it, going on there because we had originally thought maybe it had gotten tipped at the line, but the replay showed it clearly did not get hit by anyone. Yeah, and, and clearly he didn't make great contact with it. So it was a, a you know, tough spot. I was honestly expecting them to try to play for to get closer. And um, obviously it's a makeable kick, but in that environment for a freshman, he had just missed the kick, you know, a couple drives earlier from a little further out. And I thought they would have a little more urgency there to get inside the 10 or get closer to the 10. But, hey, it works out in the end. So, you know, we don't question it as much. And, um just a, a huge moment, you know, for them to lose on a couple of kicks earlier this year, missed kicks, to come back and win this one, man. It's, you know, I just didn't know if they'd be able to come across the country on a short week and find a way to pull it out. And they didn't even play their best. And they still beat a, you know, put out a gutty win, which I think says a lot about the program. Hey, I go, you got to see this team, this BYU team up close, uh, the physicality of this team. This is not a watered down win um, because I thought going into this game, it could be, uh, you could see two different BYU teams. 
a team that had its tail between its legs coming back from a tough loss on the road to Liberty where they just got manhandled and um, no fight in them whatsoever. Maybe the crowd wouldn't be into it, all that. That was not the case. This was a good BYU team that came in. They were ready to get back on the horse and win and get back on track. And it, it I, from what I could tell on TV, it looked like this BYU team was ready to play. They definitely were, and, and I think they they kind of circled this game and obviously as a chance to really rebound and save their season. And You know, you're playing at home on a short week, and I think Coach Houston referenced the fact that they had not lost a, you know, a night home game in quite some time, especially against a, you know, a team from the East Coast. I want to say Sataki was 15-0 and against teams from the East Coast in the last 15 in night games. Um, and so there were some things that, are, you know, it's just hard to win out here, man. The, the elevation, whether they want to admit it or not, is different. You know, it's a great atmosphere. They had 55,000 people, and they were into it. They were loud during the game, especially in the fourth quarter. And um, I thought BYU had a great plan to establish the run. That's something they've, you know, they've ran it effectively this year, but they haven't been able to run it consistently because they've gotten down or they've just passed the ball. So I thought both teams, you know, really ran the ball effectively, and, and that kind of created some interesting scenarios on both sides of the ball. But they wanted this one. They were fired up, you know, watching their post game which they had a live feed in the press box after the game, after we had gotten done with ECU. They were they were pretty devastated. They had poured a lot into this game, and, and almost the players were kind of speechless at, at what happened and how they couldn't rally and, and kind of save their season, so to speak. Steven Igo, Hoist the Colors, joining us. Uh, Igo, what are you doing the rest of the night? I am uh, going back to the hotel, going to get some sleep, maybe type up another ar- article or so, but – Got another long day of travel ahead uh, tomorrow. Fly out around 11 a.m. Utah time, which isn't too bad, but you know it's just a long way, um, especially when you have a layover and you got to drive back from Raleigh. But uh, it certainly makes it easier coming off a win, so I have plenty to write about and going into a bye week. There yeah, you go. it's going to be a fun bye week and uh, start to mix in some basketball talk on uh, your appearances here. In fact, uh, this Wednesday I go, we will go through the basketball schedule and pick our wins and losses. It's my favorite segment of the year. Uh, I can't wait to see how wrong we get it. Yeah, it's because uh, it's our last Wednesday show before the season opener, believe it or not. So basketball is here. Hard to believe. Hey, I go. Speaking of wins and losses, we were talking about this earlier, and one of the callers had said we're right at the record where we wanted to be this time of year but didn't get there the way we thought we would. You know, we thought uh, maybe Tulane would be a win. uh, Navy would be a win. Those ended up being losses. And then maybe a loss to NC State and UCF. Kind of weird how you get to 6-3, and huh? Yeah, it's funny you mention that because I was kind of thinking that leaving the stadium and and driving out. And, yeah, I mean, nobody expected Tulane to be what they are. Like, you kind of reverse. Like, Tulane's the top 25 team if you played on the road as opposed to we expected that to be BYU. So it's it's just, you know, it, it's funny how you always draw it up in the preseason and say, well, this has to be a win. You know, the, the game at BYU, that's going to be tough. You're probably not going to win that. And here we are, nine games in, 75%. Look how much is, is different than we expected. I mean, go back a few weeks ago when they were 3-3 three and three and people were saying, is this team going to be able to find six wins? And what have they done? They've won the next three games. And, you know, that obviously sets up for some big games to come. And if somehow you go win at Cincinnati, I mean, you're right there in the conference championship mix hosting Houston. So, I mean, they've got a lot to play for now, not only with ball eligibility and get that monkey off their back, but uh, it, it is kind of crazy how we got to this point. Yeah. Wasn't it after that we were 3-3 three and three weave and it was the oh, caller? Oh, a bunch of people said there's no way we're going bowl. Well, I think we can all agree we're not going to a bowl. That's right. And we it were like, exa- well, yeah. I don't necessarily yeah. agree with that. Yeah, pump the brakes a little bit right yeah, there. but. So. Boy, what a difference a few weeks can make. All right, I go. Well, we're leaving. We're going home, so you'll have to find company somewhere else. <laughs> That's fine. That's fine. I, you guys killed about 10, 15 minutes. Now, so. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, no. All right, buddy. Yep, well, have a good night. Get some rest. <laughs> Later, man. There's Steven Igo. Hoist the colors live from uh, somewhere, whatever's between Provo and Salt Lake City. All right, Weave. Final thoughts. Great win, and and for the second time this year, a gutty win and a gritty win for East Carolina. And thank you to the team. We have had three late games in a row. We'll have another one. Uh, these are really late nights, early mornings, but 
when they win, it feels so much dang better. They have made these three late games and these fifth quarters a lot of fun. So thank you, Coach Houston and the players. Yeah, and let's get out of here so Shirley can hit the road. She's got a big day tomorrow. It's softball Shirley time. That's right. And about yeah. She needs She's to go. She's going to get like two hours of sleep. Yeah, she got to go. Uh, we will have the players in here Monday uh, for the Players Lounge. Looking forward to that. Thank you, folks, for tuning in, chiming in. Great night on YouTube and Facebook. Thanks to everybody for hanging out with us, calling in. Thanks to Brown and Wood for sponsoring the drive of the game. UBE had all the stats on the UBE stat sheet. The Orthopedics East injury report. The Bucks scoreboard. And, of course, Parker's Barbecue with the awesome post-game food. And a big thank you, of course, to Atlantic Wireless U.S. Sailor for the U.S. Sailor fifth quarter call-in show and the Pit Electric live line. We will be back with you in two weeks. We're out of here, but we'll be back in two Fridays from now. Uh, ECU Cincinnati pregame at four, postgame after the game. We will talk to you Monday, 3 o'clock on Pirate Radio Live. Brian Bailey show at noon. For Shirley Rhodes, the man of Chan, the weave, I am Clip Rock. We will see you next time on the Bud Light pregame tailgate and the U.S. Cellular fifth quarter call-in show. You have been listening to the U.S. Cellular fifth quarter postgame call-in show. Join us next time for complete postgame coverage of East Carolina football.